scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Stop. Just that point. From the beginning to that point. One, two, read. Listen, this is, this is the prophet speaking. It says that circumstances have kept you at a level, have kept your family at a level. Nobody crosses a particular line. Nobody crosses a particular dimension. A line has been drawn and ignorance sealed the line. And now he says, arise. It's a prophetic call. Break standards. Do something that has not been done before. And then he says, shine, be radiant with the glory of the Lord. Why? For your light is come. You've heard me say it again. Not for your light is available. It has always been available, but until it comes to you. Are we together now? That's why two people, brothers and sisters, walk this earth and their, their, their testimonies are different. Like Goshen and Egypt. Others were dying in Egypt, whereas there was absolute tranquility in Goshen. Any man that ignores the illumination that comes from the word of God cannot be helped. That's the kind of person who no amount of deliverance, no amount of breakthrough, even if you pour one gallon of oil. You see, the trouble with the church is we... we uh, of course, that's, that's not applicable here, but I'm speaking to the church. We hate illumination, but we love what illumination only can bring. If I look at you right now and say, Sam, do you know that there's a problem around your life? I see somebody, I see an altar. Sam says, now you are talking. Are you getting the point now? Anything that excuses your responsibility to contend and understand the word, we love it and we embrace it. That's the reason why we love healing. We love deliverance. Because in our minds, we think it's a faster route. Instead of studying the Bible, I can just get deliverance once. You see, nothing in the kingdom was designed to replace another truth. They all complement themselves. This is why you can find believers, they can go through deliverance, they can have healings, but never able to walk in certain truths. It's always very comfortable to say, oh, demons are stopping me, there's a cause, there's this and that and that. But then many people in the body of Christ, believe me, many people are not passionate after knowledge. I was taught by the Holy Ghost that only second to your passion and desire for God, your next assignment should be an, a, an unquenchable pursuit for illumination. You must have a hunger for light. You must have a resentment for ignorance. You must have such, such a resentment for ignorance. We travel around and I look at people outside. 
And I see how people are victims of what they don't know. You watch people all around. Victims of what they don't know. You can see a woman sit down and, and please don't feel bad. I, I mean, see people trying to maybe fry yam or do something and, and you see that they are doing the best they know with the information they think they have. They never can know that life can be better. You see a lot of pastors, well-meaning and sincere people, but victims of darkness, victims of ignorance. And I made up my mind that in my life, I will be a bank of illumination. It's an assignment. It's a project I gave myself. That I will surround myself with mysteries like chariots. That on the strength of those mysteries, you will dominate. I've been meditating on this scripture. It says, arise. Brothers and sisters, when the Bible tells you to arise, it means access has been given to that light. Arise. Arise. Shine. For your light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Verse 2. We're headed for verse 3, but let's just look at verse 2. Media, help us. Verse 2. It says, For behold, see, darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. He said, But the Lord shall arise upon you, and his glory shall be seen on you. Now this is the part, the part that blesses me so much. Verse 3. Ah, Kabbalah. Da, da. I receive it from my life. Every time I see this scripture, I know that I will never fail in life. I'm telling you. It's like, it's like you have found a jackpot. He said, Gentiles shall come. Gentiles shall come to what? I learned early in life that if you see people coming to you, Nine out of every ten are not coming for you. They are coming for what you represent and what you carry. The day you let what you carry sleep, you get set for empty pews. Are we together now? Let me tell you the truth. You see, most preachers just think people like them. They say, my members love me. <laughs> Pray for them and let them not be healed for one month. And they will show you that yes, they love you, but they love themselves more. He says, and the Gentiles, brothers and sisters, something about your life will make Gentiles come. They will give every kind of excuse. People will say, but do you know it's not your tribe? While they are criticizing you, they are still coming. You know why? Because you see, brothers and sisters, let me tell you something about illumination. Illumination is not a gift. It's a price. It's, it's, not, it's an endangered commodity. You don't find illumination on the ground. There are not many people who are really enlightened. And when you really are enlightened, the Bible says Gentiles. It's a force. It can't be stopped. Gentiles shall come to your light. And this is the part that is even greater. It says they are kings. See, their kings don't come to your light because they are arrogant people. The kings believe they have lights too. They too have some level of result. So your initial light will not impress them. It will impress the poor. It will impress the sick. But the kings will say we are watching. The queen of Sheba heard about Solomon. But it was not enough for her to come. But as the news kept resounding, a time came she could not deny it. And she carried her bounties. Up she came. See, let me tell you. There are people in your life right now. It's not like they are not seeing you. Your light is not yet notable, but they are watching. They are paying attention to the transitions that are happening. They are watching your church. They pretend like they didn't hear the testimony. But they need what you carry, but it's not yet impressive. When you continue, a day will come. Look at what happened. Do you know that the scribes, the centurion, they had been following Jesus in secret. And one night, John chapter 3, one of them just came and said, Master, look, Forget the fact that we insult you. We know. We know you are a man sent from God. Is it not in your Bible? They said, see, there is nothing as powerful as light. Men can argue it in the day, brothers and sisters. But time, when you become consistent, it says there are kings to the brightness. One result after another. You see, let me tell you, consistency is a sign of mastery. Anything you can, any result 
that is short-lived in your life was a guesswork. It was not founded upon truth. It was founded upon luck. Any dimension, listen to me very importantly, any dimension of result you had seen in your life before and you cannot get it again, it didn't happen on the strength and is dangerous. Let me tell you what deceives us. Sometimes you are, I've taught you about prophetic atmospheres. You can come into a man's prophetic atmosphere and leverage on his secret place with God and temporarily it will activate some results in your life that makes you think it was your personal altar that brought it. And so you will stop contending because in that atmosphere some things happen. You will now go back and find out you are left with your own atmosphere and your own growth and you will not be able to lift it this is what happens a man of god can come for a program and come with his own depth of spiritual reality and the strings of covenants he has with god and you find out that momentarily that church can experience growth but the man of god will now think is just a new level he's not learned the spiritual keys that really bring growth are we together now and so after a while he will find out that the truth about the state of the church is revealed. Gentiles shall come to your light. They are kings to the brightness of your rising. Gentiles. I want it to, it looks very simple, but I want it to be buried into your head. That brothers and sisters, your escape from life is your access to light. The day you find it, start jumping. I don't care what is before you. Just start rejoicing because you are out forever. Light. Light. It says, they that sat in darkness have seen a great light. Illumination. Let me tell you what illumination is. Reading your Bible does not mean you have illumination. Cramming scriptures and being able to quote them out is not illumination. Are we together now? See, one of the challenges with the body of Christ is you hear me quote scriptures and it's easy for you to think because I'm quoting them. You don't have to be a child of God to be able to quote scripture. The concept of memory is a psychological thing. Anybody can learn it. We teach children to recite memory verse. Abi, Sunday school. John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning. And the, the child is saying it just like, like a robot. You think that child is enlightened? Of course, he's on his way to, en to enlightenment. But it's not enlightened. Many of us are frustrated because we think we have accumulated a lot of scriptures. And we think on the strength of those scriptures because we can speak them out. It means we are illuminated. No. You are only illuminated when understanding comes. When you can draw out the mysteries and the principles behind the scripture, illumination has come for you. Otherwise, everything you have is just the letter. And the Bible says it can kill. Learn this. It's not just because you found it in the Bible. Where it was written, by his stripes I am healed. And you say, oh, I found it. In the name of Jesus, Lord, this is your word. Hold on. You think you have gotten illumination. Are you seeing why we don't get results? Although we are holding scripture, it's unable to. The Bible says that we can make the word of God of non-effect. There is a technology that breaks the word of God and releases the life therein. That's what we call illumination. Two men were going with Jesus to Emmaus. You've read that scripture. And the Bible says, Jesus, the living word, the resurrected Christ was with them. They were discussing with him, but their eyes were closed. A man can be around Bible, around church, around revelation. You are listening to several messages, but until your eyes are open, you will never have illumination. And the danger is that your familiarity with scripture will convince you to think you have illumination, but your results will show that you've not gotten it and it will frustrate you. That's the situation with many of us here. So you are spending time reading your Bible, which is good, but there is no illumination. Let me tell you how you will know. You can measure darkness in your life. Start looking at every area of your life one by one. The result there is a direct reflection of your access 
to light or otherwise you will have to be very humble to admit what i'm telling you hallelujah gentiles will come to your light your assignment is not to run around chasing people looking for favor no the reason why we are the ones running around people is because we do not have light the bible says gentiles shall come to your light they are kings to the brightness of your rising if you want to come out of the situations that surround your life the first key is light the first key is illumination there is something you do not know right now that is responsible for the quality of your life are we, are we together please listen are we together there is something you don't know right now there is something you can know that will change your life forever i sit down and i look at what the lord has shown me now and i look at what i used to know four five six year, years ago and i cannot imagine that i was comfortable and even preaching at that level of ignorance between the last one year of my life i can turn back and see very clear evidences of ignorance beyond my imagination I would have argued with you if you told me that there were so many things I didn't know. Amazing. There are many of us who are convincing ourselves right now that we are so enlightened. But your life is betraying that conviction. And so it's time to settle down and ask yourself very sincerely. Do I have light or do I just have the letter? Do I have light? Write this word down. The mysteries of the kingdom. I'm giving you a key to the prayer you may have been praying. The fast. If you're not interested in hearing what I'm saying, then forget, forget about a solution. Forget about results in your life. I really want you to get results. I really pray that we'll all get results. The mysteries of the kingdom. I've taught it here again and again that a mystery is a secret truth. A mystery is like a code of operation. A code of operation. A secret code of operation. In the kingdom, men reign on the strength of the mysteries they have come to understand and apply. Write those two words, understanding and application. These are the two things that make the word of God profit you, understanding and application. In all you're getting, it says get understanding. Wisdom tells you what to do. Understanding tells you how to do it. Wisdom tells you it is good to tithe. Understanding tells you how to tithe. That you don't just carry money and just come and drop like a bribe. The Bible says honor the Lord, not give to the Lord. When it comes to tithing, your attitude is as important as the substance you are holding. Are we together now? So the Bible teaches us that it has been given unto us. Say it has been given to me. Please say it, personalize it. It has been given to me. To know the mysteries of the kingdom. Brothers and sisters, if what I'm telling you enters your spirit and you take it seriously, you will get up and walk. You will, in, within a month, the results you will produce within a month will dwarf what you've had for many years. Please believe me anybody who is not ready to sit down and understand the mysteries of the kingdom is a man that cannot be helped i run away from people who do not have passion for understanding the word they are dangerous i rather stay with i rather stay with a herbalist 
a herbalist is more friendly at least he's passionate about something than than a careless person who has no passion his ignorance will affect you don't forget people have atmospheres right the same way you contact sickness just by coming close to somebody and we say it's a communicable disease what do you know about kingdom wealth and who taught you what do you know what is your guarantee for a blessed life i think i'm fine you are joking you are really joking i went to school you are joking two times i'm very serious i mean jokes apart i'm really serious this night What do you know that will make you excel in ministry? I'm a man of God. They laid hands on me. You are really joking. What do you think will bring a crowd to your church? I'm probing. I'm showing you all the areas. When I, when it's like a call and response. When I mention the area, tell me the mystery you know that supports your confidence that you will excel in that area. And you will see how we are moving with rings of ignorance. We are just hoping we know. Can you tell me what you think will make you remain in the next 20 years? What if somebody is calling your name to die tomorrow? I come for koinonia. God knows my heart is open. What else? See, I'm opening us up to see the need for strategic knowledge. You see, another mistake is many believers go for knowledge, but our knowledge is not strategic, it's not applicable it's like a student who maybe got medicine and he can sit down and say i think i want to attend a, an architecture lecture and he goes there and then next tomorrow he's in theater arts he's taking lectures but it's not strategic it's not constructive at the end he will never become a doctor so many of us are puffed up by several messages we have listened to you gather the message of anybody abroad, anything new, you just put them together. You swallow them like a drug and say, Satan, come and try me. And he says, you are still the same. Let me tell the truth. You have not changed. I don't want to waste my time gathering revelations and informations that sustain no power to produce results in my life and the life of others do you know the danger especially as a leader pastors hear this you see when people come they submit to your tutelage this is the danger so if while you are ignorant they keep drinking from that ignorance until the day god delivers you and you will hope that they are around when he delivers you so you can tell them look i've been misleading you here's the correction what if you are not there they travel with that ignorance start their own churches too and the ignorance spreads hallelujah there is something bishop oyedeko knows that we do not know there is something he has handled that is producing the results are we together oh he's just lucky he had an 18 hour vision wait until he tells you the processes that led to that thing that encounter I want you to be tired of lack of results in your life. We don't serve God for results, but you are frustrated when there is no result in your life. In every area of your life. So what gives you confidence that you are not going to die? Many people have said I will not die and they died. So think quietly. What gives you confidence that you are not going to die? Bold face does nothing to Satan. I won't die. What gives you confidence that you will remain in hell? Oh, by his stripes I am healed. You ask how many people keep quoting this thing as they keep coughing out blood till they die. I'm, I'm challenging you. Is God speaking to us? What gives you confidence, brothers and sisters, that you will get up and travel and come back safe? The Bible never hid it from us that there are arrows that fly by day. He never said they flew once, they won't fly. They are constantly flying, even now. The Bible calls certain things a noisome pestilence. Right? He said not the destruction that wasted by noonday. 
it tells you a thousand shall fall so there are so many people falling brothers and sisters it's time for us to probe whether what we have is true light or just shadows of realities what gives you a guarantee that you are going to get a job did you know that two for instance out of every maybe 10 or 20 graduates get jobs within their first five years of graduation there are many first class students two one students two two students from prestigious universities who are still waiting joining the queue even if they give 1,000 jobs in a parastatal, there are other people who even have other advantages. They have uncles and aunties. You, you don't have anybody. So by default, you are disadvantaged. What gives you an edge? What makes you think you are going to rise? Is God speaking to us tonight? Hmm. Illumination. There are many pastors who give excuses. Oh, our church is not growing because the location is not, is not very, the, the location is, is in a wilderness. Is that true? Is that true? Look what is happening to many families. We are victims of the arsenals of darkness. Anybody can die anyhow, any day. Anything can happen to anybody anyhow, any day. But he says, you will arise and shine. Oh, I respect the word of God. I not only believe it, I respect it. I found my way. My only confidence in life is on the strength. God took his integrity and put it to be released only when the word is understood. Listen, what you don't understand is the same thing as not having it. If I have... Can you help me with this camera? I, I won't touch it. Just show me where I shouldn't touch. Where I shouldn't touch here. All right. Can I hold this here? Is it okay? Look at this. This is a wonderful gadget. Are we together? Please, Pastor Femi, come. Come, just stand by my side. This is a camera. Is that true? He doesn't have any. Now, if I say who is better, I know you will say me. Because I'm holding one. I'm, I'm showing you cameras all around. And then you ask me, show me the pictures. And I say, look, forget about pictures. I have the camera. Are you not seeing it? No, no, no. Listen, listen. The goal of this camera is to snap pictures you can see. And I've been holding this camera for a long time. I'm even laughing at this guy. And say, you are standing no camera. We'll see where the pictures will come from. And you are holding this. There are no pictures. Are you seeing that? Who is truly better? I think it's this guy because he's in a point where he even knows he does not have. So his breakthrough can be faster. You, you think you have. If someone else comes with camera too, you say we are colleagues because you are holding camera. You see what deceives a lot of people. Uh, the moment they hear a man of God shed, they say we are also we are fellow pastors in this vineyard. We know what we are doing and they will never sit down to learn. The woman with the issue of blood said, look, I, I know I have a problem. I'm not guessing. But the scribes will come for Jesus' meetings. They will come as contemporaries. When he's speaking, they'll be nodding. He knows the law. And they remain there in darkness. And there were other sinners who would come and receive. This is the problem with the church. We think because we have scriptures. The moment I say Isaiah 6, he say, oh, arise, shine. That's where he's going. But has it produced results? Has it produced results? This gentleman is holding a camera. Do you know his camera can even be better than this one? Yet it's not producing results. No understanding. Let me tell you, lack of understanding is as bad as ignorance. You can have knowledge and it can be wasteful if there is no understanding. Yeah. Thank you. The more I know God, the more I see how predictable this life can be. Listen, the more I know the ways of God, the more I see how predictable a man's destiny can be. As scattered and haphazard as it looks, 
there is a spiritual rhythm light can show you the path it says thy word oh lord is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path i like you to shout it after me i'm tired of confusion in my life say i'm tired of guessing in my life that you are faced with challenges and then you say i think this is the key you now try it it doesn't work you now go back do you know that certain challenges cannot give you a long time to keep guessing if you don't get it once it can destroy you there is somebody out to destroy you in your village and that person's destruction is only at the mercy of what you know that can bail you out your ignorance if you allow it too long you may be caught up in that tragedy are we together this is what I tell myself all the time. Joshua Selman, you must get rid of ignorance and confusion in your life. And the key is the word of God. Listen, listen, listen. No other, no other instrument can give you true light outside the word of God. Make no mistakes about it. I've read a lot of books. I've read psychology books. I've read business books. I've read all kinds of things any principle or thought that is not consistent with the word of god is going to add to your confusion and ultimately waste your life because there are people who are trying to get enlightenment outside the world the bible calls their light darkness are we together now i i see a lot of people teach and talk and it's even stepping into the church whenever we are teaching certain things especially about success we we push the word of god out and we say just leave bible this one we are now talking common sense anything outside the word of god is going to confuse your life what is contained in this word mysteries mysteries keys kabbalatayada keys that open doors these are ancient keys brothers and sisters those see there is no door in your life that has not been opened by somebody before the bible lists them in hebrews chapter 11 men who had these keys and did so many great things knowledge say it again i'm tired of guessing i'm tired of guessing i'm tired of guessing we are guessing over our finances. We are guessing over ministry. We are guessing over the anointing. I think I'm anointed. No, you are not. If you are anointed, there should be an evidence. If there is no evidence, you are not. Calm down and look for the keys. Hallelujah. If what happened to you last year remains with you this year, then it's your fault. We must contend for light. Everybody say there is a light that can deliver me everybody said there is a key that can open that door brothers and sisters there is no door that is made without a key but every door is at the mercy of the key he said i have given to it's been given to you to know the mysteries the mysteries of the kingdom what keeps you in divine health look at sicknesses flying all around you enter a restaurant you don't even know where they got the water from and you are eating and you are happy and you are running around and you want to live long right now there are all kinds of documentaries that almost call everything bad i saw one that said microwave causes cancer for god's sake me that has to microwave food almost every day so that means i'm going to die young what do you understand by the life of god when the bible says great is the mystery of godliness that God can dwell in a man. Have you caught the, his, the, the revelation of that truth? That God can dwell in a man. That God can dwell in a man. Let's take our finances for instance. At least this concerns us. What do you know about your finances? Or are you hoping that one day you will be blessed? That's a costly hope. Sister, do you have any shorty 
that a man is going to come and carry you. Believe me, if all you have is that I'm fine or I'm in a place where there are gentlemen, you are joking. See, let me tell you something. Knowledge truly kills fear. Uh, stand up, Pastor Femi. Stand up, promise. Watch these guys. Please sit down. Sit down. Were you afraid of sitting? Did you turn back to even check? You know why? Because they are sitting based on an enlightenment. They know what this chair can do. Are we together now? They know that this chair can take their weight. They are not thinking about it. I'm not holding this mic wondering if it will shock me. I don't expect it to. Are we together now? I'm not holding this, trusting it to scatter. No, 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 no. This guy is not playing this keyboard hoping that the sound will just stop. He knows it should continue because he's playing it with knowledge. I gave an example last year, I think when I was teaching. I don't know if he was here or another meeting. If I call somebody who cannot play this keyboard and I say sit down, look how wonderful what he's playing is. Are we together now? That person who doesn't know how to play keyboard. Cameraman, come. Ah, do you know how to play keyboard? Don't waste our time, come. Alright, Mike, please stand up quickly. Just do whatever you think you know to do. Quickly. One minute. Now, let's see. Look at me. How many of you know that this keyboard is absolutely obedient? It will produce any sound. Now, play anything. Go ahead. You may be making sense. Go ahead. Alright, watch this. Now, this guy thinks the problem is the keyboard. Are we together now? Because he doesn't believe anything is wrong with him. Ah, why are these kids not doing, why are they not playing like this? The problem is never the keyboard. The keyboard was designed to be played, but it has rules. There is a rhythm. You see the keys, black, white, everything scattered. Alright? Okay, thank you, thank you. Go and do your job. Alright, so Mike, play. Please play something. Same keyboard. Same church. Same ministry, same business, same academics, same Nigeria. Play, go ahead. Anything. Same keyboard. That guy said his government. That guy said it's, it's, it's Nigeria that is not giving job. That guy says machines that cause cancer. I mean, look at this. Listen, the Bible. Now, watch this. When everybody is in a pool of ignorance and one person stands out, what do you think will happen? The world was designed to not ignore spectacular things. It's impossible for a thing to be spectacular and not draw attention. Are we together now? Is your life spectacular enough to draw everyone, including your destiny helpers? Those who can say, look, Benga, come and take five plots of land. I just want you to be around me because there is a testimony that you carry something that is notable. My goodness. Life will become so cheap for you when you pay the price to carry light. You see, access to illumination is truly a sign of God's love because not everyone, listen, not everyone will have the opportunity to go to school. Not everyone will have the opportunity to learn English. Not everyone will have the opportunity to be born by rich parents. But everybody can have access to illumination. And brothers and sisters, when you find it, it will change your life forever. I kept thinking about this really. And I was telling myself, oh God, can you make the lives of your people so predictable? Absolutely predictable. Absolutely predictable. See, one of, the, one of the indices for measuring favor is, is um, the Bible calls it, it says you will be a delightsome land. People like to be around you because they have a track record that something happens to them every time they are close to you. I like getting close to the ma welfare mama because something happens to me every time. Are we together now? <laughs> Who is seeking you for what you carry? 
Is it not surprising you that you are a nuisance to everybody around you? They started it quietly, but now they are open about it. Everybody is telling you, you are really a nuisance to me. Pastors, who is seeking you? Who calls your phone and will not mind calling it hundred times because he knows that if you pick, his problem dies. Who is willing to pick your call? That even if you say, I don't have credit, say, no problem. Me, I have money. It's, it's, I need light. They sought for Jesus to a point that people tore zinc. They knew they could negotiate with the owner of the house later on. Who has been that desperate about your grace? Who has coveted your anointing so bad they can pay anything for it? Light. Who has defended you in the presence of your enemies because of the degree of impact you have made in his life? And the person has said, I will never hear anybody talk against Sam. What Sam has done to my life, even when they are right, I will fight them. Aye. See, brothers and sisters, there are cheap pathways you can find in this scripture. And bail yourself out of this wicked world. Everyone say illumination. Say understanding. There is something we all do not know. That is responsible for where we are. The problem is we are too arrogant to learn. We are too pompous to admit the fact that there is something we do not know. How many young people brag around because they read one Brian Tracy book and they say, I'm a financial expert. You see that? There is so much ignorance in our generation. I'm speaking to people inside and outside. So much ignorance in our generation, spiritually. Every man of God believes him too. He's a captain of his own, even if there's no result. And everybody comes and once you can join one scripture and just say, this. I don't say it in a cynical way. I know the things that are not in my life and I'm desperately pursuing them with every sense of humility and hunger. And even if it is one of our little ones here that have, it will not cost me anything to kneel down and say, show me the way. This is what we do not have. This is one thing I respect about this man of God. I'm sorry I have to use you, pastor. This is, this is, this is an elderly man. But the humility, this man has pursued me like... Like, I don't even know what to say. I was shocked seeing him. I said again. The day, I, the day he came over to my place and I was talking. I mean, these people eat my teaching in their church as if. You will never be the same man of God. It's a law. You will never be the same. I know why many of you are not being changed. Although you are in a place of tremendous change. Pride. Familiarity. You do not discern. You do not discern. Please listen to me. The Bible says you don't discern the Lord's body. And for that reason, many are weak. Many are sick. Oh, I've had koinonia message. Activating breakthrough. Destiny, I've had it. I was even there. They used me as an example. And you think that letter is illumination. And somebody somewhere in one, one room made with mud will download it and say, Lord, I have found it. I found the key. So destiny help us. And be praying it and the Holy Ghost will say, this is it. A woman came from Benway State. I think, I, I can't remember last year or so. This woman came with her husband. They were pastors for many years. They had struggled. It's a terrible thing to be in ministry without any helper. You pay for everything by yourself. <laughs> when, when the woman, listen, when the woman, I don't know how, I think one, somebody here in, in Koinonia went there and gave her just that message. Activating breakthroughs, the ministry of destiny helpers. She received that message digested the message she said she listened to that message at least 20 or 25 times there are messages in my life i've listened to up to 1000 times one message god is my witness one message i'm a product of many anointings what are you a product of your world your rema your deception you keep moving around in confusion with no result Staring up expectations in people. Oh, I've come for this meeting. You will see what God will do. They say, we are watching. 
At the end of you, say it's just that there's no time. Otherwise, you would have seen what God would do. He said, Lie, there is time. There is time. Nothing will ever cover for lack of light. Not suit, not good dressing, not English, not even Rema. He says, you, If you are not rising, your light has not come. It was designed to come and pick you from where you are. In your name. We will rise. I don't know. You reign on high. It's in your name. We will rise. I don't know. You reign on high. In your name. We will rise. I listen to at least one koinonia message i know there are uncommon mysteries forget that it came through me i have learned many things from my messages than many messages i listen to it and i'm praying and when is the time when apostle is prophesying i kneel down and i lift my hands as he's speaking see listen you have to learn what i'm telling you because this year make up your mind not to cheat yourself see arrogance with no result is not leading it's it's like a man wearing suit with not even five naira is there he say it's just that i kept the money so no 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 i'm tired of lack of results there is a higher standard god is gauging me with god will not gauge me with the same standard he's gauging many of us because to whom much is given much is expected are we together now Thank God for all of the breakthroughs and the impartations. During my retreat for this year, I said any ministry I honor, we, it is like a rattling. We, you know how an earthquake is? Huh? An earthquake or a tsunami. That's what is going to happen in that church. Any ministry, including your church, man of God. My goodness. Yeah. To increase capacity. When you step in, you break chains. You shatter darkness. When you do that, for every ministration you go, there are 10 more waiting for you from it. You see that? Not the one that you just go and say, well, maybe the next one is September and you're just sitting. Of course, you don't use those things just as indices, but there is not enough fire. That's why. Because needs are still there. People suspect you have a track record of not producing results. So nobody's ready to invest in your anointing. Hallelujah. Please hear what I'm saying. What have you learned? What truth do you know that can bail you out? What do you know that can bail you out? If I give you a mic right now, I say, come, teach us one kingdom mystery you have learned. What will it be? What will it be? You see that many of you are just enjoying fellowship, but you are not really holding on to something. Kai, he said, I know whom I have believed. He said, I am persuaded. I've held on to these things. It was the apostle Peter that said, that which we have seen, that which we have heard, that which our hands have handled. You can't tell me I'm not holding this. No matter how you deceive me, I'm holding it. I can feel it. I have become one with that experience. What do you know about the anointing of the Holy Spirit? We keep talking about the ability of God walking in a man. You jump at it, you fall under that anointing. But what do you know about it? What do you know about the anointing and getting a job? What do you know about the anointing and breakthrough in ministry? What have you learned? 
God asked me to pause with the series we'll start because some of us, what we need is not just a new message. What we need is getting back to say, look, I need to get this thing now. There are certain truths that I know and I will never waste my time in certain levels of ignorance. Every time I meet a wall before me, I know that there is an anointing I must invoke that will call a man. A man must appear for that door to open. So my prayer is very strategic and intentional. I don't pray stupid prayers. I pray with intelligence. Lord, where are the helpers? I call them. Because I know if a helper does not appear, that door will not open. And here comes the helper. Because I know how to call them. They never come on their own. They are always called. You have been waiting for them. You will wait forever. There is a mystery that calls helpers. Are you seeing that round? So our parents are waiting. God will send somebody to pay the rent. You will wait forever. There is a mystery. Brothers and sisters, please hear me. Am I challenging you tonight? I want you to get this thing. I love you. That's why you see me teach this. I want you to hold on to something. Don't hold on to shadows. We are in a hurry to teach. We are in a hurry to do ministry. When we should sit down and learn. I tell you the truth, I wish that I can just have a vacation of four or five months. December's are usually happy periods when we round up program because that two or three weeks where I don't have to teach anybody, I now go back to feed my spirit. I preach an average of two or three messages every week aside from school of ministry we are resuming. So there are so many things sucking out of me. Time is so limited for me. But many of us have everything all the messages are there with the testimonies do you know you can sit down crying in a room and the light to liberate you is in a message lying down there and the angels are standing close to you and say activate us what is all this what do you need to learn again and you call your uncle he says i won't pick and you are there helpless and the angels are saying what is uncle we are here what is uncle have you not read in the Bible that strangers shall feed your flock? Which one is uncle again? But in your mind, according to what you know, if your uncle does not pick your call after two days, you are dead. Who told you? Aya. Have you not had the ravens brought bread for Elijah? Where did the ravens come from? Lack of light has limited us. Please hear what I'm saying. God can raise helpers for you. You have tied God. How many pastors sit down and say it's, it's, it's because we are young people, it's because we have not put balloon around the church, that's why people are not coming. No. And we get angry and fight ourselves and move in ignorance and, and, and we have protocol and PA, no power, no grace, no understanding, no results. The trouble is that they now invite us for programs and you see people writing our ignorance and they go back to go and practice it and come back shocked and confused. Lean and hungry. Say, I'm tired of guessing. Say it again. I don't know how to beg you and make you believe what I'm saying. I honor the Lord for what he's doing in this ministry. The crowds outside, the crowds inside. But brothers and sisters, hear me. And I say this with all humility. Never make a mistake to think it is guess. It can be reproduced anywhere. The same result. It was founded upon mysteries, not luck. Are we together? Yeah. Jesus went to the desert. The same crowds came. He went to the mountain. He went by the... The people, men and women, climbed the mountain, stayed there three days. He had to now say, let's feed them. Is God speaking to us? Who told you God cannot change your story? Who told you that God cannot lift you up? There is something you don't know. I'm talking especially to the sisters. This our dependency mindset must die this year. This sitting down and hoping. Not, when is Valentine? Answer me, I'm not laughing. When is Valentine? Next, when, 14. Next week, Friday. Next week, Sunday. It's possible right now that many of us have expectations. And in our prayer, I'm not saying you are carnal, but you are just hoping that somebody will be the one to come and bail you out. 
listen this word will never profit you until the light breaks and the mystery behind it enters you when you hold on to it go to bed you have entered your sabbath see i don't care if at the time you are holding it bishop oyedeko was there probably with one or two clothes but when he caught that revelation he said he shouted i can never be poor can you say you can never be poor honestly can you say it yeah i can say it oh my goodness i wave poverty by it wave me back deal done because for as long as there is one sick body hmm, for as long as there is one life that must be changed you see there is something you can hold on to brothers and sisters that will wipe your tears look at frank edwards he carried something he knew and sits upon that keyboard it and bought cars with it and started an NGO with it and his blessing lies with it what have you been ignoring that is authorizing satan in your life what have you been ignoring that is stopping you from entering school you are saying jam is hard keep quiet and think what has been stopping you I'm on my way to better days. I'm on my way to better days. Listen, let me tell you why I'm teaching you this. You see, my heart will bleed if we keep having people. I told you the Lord showed me that this year, Koinonia will be like a place of pilgrimage. I saw several people coming. It will be a painful thing to see pastors, businessmen come and giving testimonies and say, I just had three messages and it changed me. And all you do from now till December is to clap. Wow. Is it true? A miracle happened yesterday in a meeting. A lady who had a hole in her teeth, teeth supernaturally appeared before everybody. And the people were watching. I don't know what some of them thought I was. But let me tell you. With that kind of result, you will not be hungry. I promise you. Are we together? Oh, no, no, no. Hunger, you and hunger will part away. You are not selling it. But somebody will be too grateful. And people were crying and just watching. And I sat down and I looked. I said, my goodness. When you catch this thing, bah, you have caught it. If it's not there, it's not there. Hallelujah. There's a particular university. There are currently doing an election of the vice chancellor and all of that i think you guys will bear me witness when we're coming and several people were calling me oh i'm going to come will it work How? i mean these are people distinguished personalities that on a good day if i knock their office they should arrest me and go and lock me but something there is something they need and god didn't put it outside me every useful thing is inside me wisdom anointing i love the lord you can never take it and leave me we must go together if you need it, this body will enter a plane with it. We will all go together. That's why you should never, never, never not be successful in your life. Shout it again. I hate confusion. I hate confusion. See, Satan comes to you and manipulates your life. He studies your ignorance and uses it as his tools. He studies your ignorance. He can create illusions out of your ignorance. Satan is not a fool. He doesn't just run and come into your life. He takes a track record. He looks at the areas you don't know anything about or where you have not respected the authority of the word of God. And so he can look at you and say, do you know that until they do arrange for you on internet, a husband is not coming because he has studied and he has seen that you have not found out that light that male and female, he created them. That the Bible says, seek out of the book and read, none shall want her mate. He searches the bank of the word in you and does not find that mystery present. And he says, use this. And all of a sudden, you are a Christian. You love God. You are praying in tongues. But the next thing, you now start going to join all kinds of useless groups because you are looking for a, a husband. And he takes advantage of you. And he will bring a demon to your life and destroy you. You will marry in two months and suffer for the rest of your life because of ignorance. 
and you find out that in that one mistake your ministry has been implicated in that one mistake your children have been implicated because they are going to grow under the atmosphere of a bad father god is telling you this way the authority over your life is saying this way and people say submit what have you ignored that is responsible for the strength of darkness in your life i'm chasing after you no matter what i have to do for i need you more and more i'm so aware of my ignorance so i'm chasing after you no matter what i have to do lord i need you I want to challenge you koinonia you have to be determined go back home tonight and write a list of all the major areas of your life where you truly know that you are not getting results humble yourself and pursue light are we together now are we together now forget about valentine or whatever it is of course celebrate it god bless you but i'm telling you this if you want a happy day february 14th every day of your life find out what has god said do i understand what is don't think what you think god said you see that you can assume it's like exams every student sits down they say start and everybody's writing and when you come out the person will say what was your answer you say five but you say my own was three and two of them believe they are right it's left for the lecturer by the time you see zero what does that mean it means you were wrong say ah but the man didn't mark my script well you still got zero everybody who scored five got it for you did your calculation and arrived at three meaning you failed you didn't get it well it's up to you to adjust and say no 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 i think i missed something or be arrogant and say it's a bad man waiting for another man many of us never will admit that we are ignorant it doesn't cost me anything you you don't know how i whenever god tells me son i think you need to know more there is a dimension of me you do not know here and you have to correct it i jump at it i almost spend a vigil online searching for everything looking for any koinonia message that relates to that if god says son you like ladies this night be like him where are all those hot messages i preach on character be like him um um the, uh, he heaven and hell realities of heaven and hell part one and two that's what i will listen to till tomorrow till it irons out that dimension in me you don't tremble at his word that's why we don't change when you look at ministries and see the ministries that there is the anointing on their life you see what is happening you just sit down you see you will never preach people into running away from results because you are not getting it if i am not getting results in my life right now and pastor femi is getting results and i try to trivialize what he's doing to make you consider him unserious i'm only joking because the truth is you have problems and do you know members know where to get answers oh yes they know where to get answers i told you was it last week or week before last that if i am an unbeliever when i'm sick i promise you i'll go to babalao i wouldn't do it in the secret all these go to the secret i will do it openly let camera even follow me i will go there and then i'll wait for the one person who will come to challenge me and i'll bring another person as sick as me and say i will kneel down and apologize to you if you heal him otherwise go back home as simple as that are we together i foresee that a time will come that thing will happen in church members will hold charm and come for service with it the moment they are talking before altar call somebody will stand up and say sir this guy I bought for you this is the charm that brought it and i can throw it if you can prove it otherwise that's what happened between moses and pharaoh he had to take the rod and pharaoh said get out of this place you grew up you ate the food that this god ra brought now you are coming to destroy it and moses said i found someone higher nobody great nobody greater no nobody greater than you listen 
Moses said, as at that time, I thought Ra was the highest of the gods. And so my allegiance, but I found, I found somebody in the wilderness. And he called himself, I am. And he said, that he's coming to show his sovereignty. And when he swallowed up this, and after nine, ten plagues, Pharaoh had to give up. Pastors, let's stop deceiving people. We know where we are telling the truth and where we are not telling the truth. We know where we have results and where we don't have results. Let's admit it and not explain. Creation is not waiting for the explanation of the sons of God. It's waiting for the manifestation. There are people who have traveled from far and come for this meeting now. Some of them have come desperate to receive something imagine if all these people traveled all the way and then they just go back like that if you don't listen to what i'm telling you brothers and sisters you will be very frustrated in your christian journey because the end of every assimilation of truth is that it produces a result for you by the time you get up and go home now you already know that every time you see your father misbehaving you now know because you've received superior intelligence that this man is not acting on his own volition. He's been influenced by powers. You see, the devil can no longer use his habit to keep the spirit of anger in you because another light has delivered you. So when you come out from the place of prayer and he starts ranting like a beast, you know you already have superior intelligence and you find out that Satan was using that to keep the spirit of anger so he would destroy you. But now another light has delivered you. And then number two, you now know that he's not fighting with him physically and saying, Daddy, I wound you. The moment he says that, you know where to go and all of a sudden your father will see you and it's as if he's afraid there's something wrong but there are many of us you leave koinonia you come and you are fighting you slap your father you beat why are you acting in ignorance is god speaking to us now have you not noticed how every time you are pressing into God, it looks like there are people all around you who can station themselves to do things that would destroy you. They are trying to fight something. Hallelujah. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ that light will give you peace, 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 peace. It will swallow away fear from your life and it will give you peace. When you have a revelation, for instance, hear me, that no human being, no man born of a woman can take your life. Not with enchantment. I can only imagine how many places my name has been called in different altars. Maybe when I'm traveling now, they now say die. It's difficult to kill me. I look just physical, but they that are with me, the mysteries that surround me are many many like you see obama you can just see him walking you try to shoot him before you leave the gun you are dead you don't know who was watching you you just know they shot you you didn't see anybody but a bullet entered you because what is more than what you are seeing koinonia hear me i want you to hold your bible please hold your bible inside and outside hold your bible say after me lord jesus this year i pray that the mysteries that would have to be opened for my destiny to change hidden in this word may they be open for me the mysteries of prosperity the mysteries of influence the mysteries of the anointing the mysteries of favor the mysteries of advancement the mysteries of breakthrough the mysteries of the anointing the mysteries of grace release it upon me oh god if god answers that prayer you'll be a wonder this year because it will surprise you it's not because there is nobody to give you the job there is something you have not done.
the earlier you admit it the faster and the better for you oh there's one guy that said i should just hold on when a job when there's job interview he will give me that's too costly you are living your life at the mercy of somebody if it now doesn't work you will hate the person why don't you live forget about all these things and wait upon god are we together now oh a lecturer promised me that this time around i will get a in my project what if that lecturer is sick and is not there during your defense then you fail woe to him that puts his strength in a man Oh, God said, I'm going to enter the house. How do you think you are going to enter the house? Just because you think you are earning 50,000. Can 50,000 give you a house? You two ask yourself. Look at, see, this is how foolish, I'm sorry to say it, but this is how foolish some of our parents are. They, 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 whenever they are, they are looking at their salary, oh, 50,000, so let's calculate. It will never work that way. The devil will use it to destroy you. One sickness will wipe away the budget and the devil will keep mocking us you've raised five hundred thousand. One sickness will wipe it away but you can walk certain principles and a man will lack his sleep in the night and get up in the morning and say sorry i don't know who this person is but the lord has called me and said pastor alpha god has said i should change your story and you'll be sitting there dumbfounded and god will say you ask for it i said ask and you shall receive but the Bible says that we not pray amiss. Mothers, fathers, everybody, please hear me. There is a way out of everything, I believe. There is a way out of everything. Sister, that marital delay in your family can be broken to pieces if a certain kind of revelation. Just one more thing I'll add to us and we'll pray. One of the mysteries that I have learned in my life that has changed my life forever is the discernment of the body of Christ I know there are many mysteries I keep repeating these things because I want your life to change all men are not equal criticize me but just listen all men are not equal if you take that mindset this is not supposed to be a bad statement please don't misunderstand me i wish it were a lie but it's the truth all men are not equal it was the apostle that was teaching the church in Corinth. he said because you cannot discern the lord's body the organogram of and the structure he said for this cause for not discerning i'm not talking of holy communion for not discerning the body and the individuals that have been stationed there who are carriers of your breakthrough he said some are weak how many people have died today because they have not discerned what god has put in the body it's like a table if you come to eat on the table is it not what you know that you will eat you see something looking yellow you are not sure and you will leave it there and later you find out that that thing is good for your health that's how we are listen I'm talking about light and illumination the bible says let the word of christ dwell in us in all richness colossians 3 16. but you see one of the greatest blessings of god to the church outside the holy spirit is the positioning of gifts in the body please listen to me i've told you that there are two ministries you must encounter for your destiny to open the moment you meet christ there are two ministries you must encounter the apostolic and the prophetic the bible says the church was built with a very definite system it says christ being the chief cornerstone and directly above it are foundations the apostles and the prophets now that's not to say other um, members of the body is the same thing you don't give your life to the holy spirit you don't come and say holy spirit you died for me he didn't die for you although they are equal with God but salvation has been put in no other name there is an office that ministers salvation are we together that's how it is you have passed listen there are certain dimensions in life you can never take yourself you hear me say this thing all the time there no matter how arrogant you are 
no man can bless himself. There are certain dimensions that it will take a representative of these ministries. It's an election by grace to open up certain doors for you and you will walk in it as if the devil never existed. There are many churches who have done everything but ignore these ministries. And many of you have been trained to criticize all kinds. I've, I've told you here, just keep quiet when it comes to the body of Christ. Serve God with truth and dignity. There are many of our parents that are grounded God will invite a man to their churches and they will look at the person and say, this young guy. Or God will invite somebody who will come and maybe the person cannot speak English very well and they now sit down intellectually and the man is teaching. He may not be able to talk very well, but there is an office he occupies. Are we together now? He may talk and mix it with language and you are there calculating intellectually. Say, I thought I, I need somebody with Rema. Tell me Greek and Hebrew words. Whereas the person sent, he came out dressed like John, like, like, like a prophet. Even Jesus could not ignore the ministry of John and excel. Because when he came, he looked for the one who that mantle was upon, that foundational mantle. John said, ah, I've seen you. Say, no, suffer it to be so. I, I will not break protocol. Jesus would have been surprised if he didn't pass through John. When it was time, the Holy Ghost spoke to certain apostolic councils, separate me Paul and Barnabas. He spoke to them. There was something they did upon Paul and Barnabas. Did you know that Agabus had daughters that were prophets, but they never excelled in ministry? Look at that. They died with their prophetic grace because although they were prophets, they ignored the structure of the body. Listen, there are many people the Bible talked about for a little time and you never had them again. That's why some of us are where we are. Gods of ourselves with our own rema bragging all around. There was a pastor friend, I used to watch him. Um, the guy loves me so much, he admires me, but I think for a very long time I used to see him. He just comes around, laughs around. When they are prophesying or speaking, he's even embarrassed sometimes to lift his hand. He just, he just lifts his hands as if he's waving. And I knew that this guy would never receive anything. In his mind, he thinks he will receive. Let me tell you something. There are requirements from receiving from these gifts one of the requirements is honor 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 you must honor both the person and the office he says he please this is not human worship i don't want you i have no business i wish i were not the one preaching this i wish we were just hearing a tape so that you will believe it's true i have seen listen i have passed so many people who there is enough grace to wipe their tears and their families and i've been shocked the way the anointing was locked up within me as i watched these families go down in penury because honor is the key that releases the anointing jesus entered certain cities and passed like this a woman was pressing his garment and other people were looking at him what have you ignored that has refused your door from opening Please hear what I'm saying, Koinonia. Don't wait until after 10 years of miserable failure and then you now think and say, let me listen to this message. Hear it now and rise. Wake up and live. Rise above your contemporaries as if the devil does not exist. A few who have learned this key have broken every limitation and barrier. The Bible says, for this cause, many are weak. When it was time, when sickness, when the serpents were destroying the people, nothing happened to Moses. Question, what did the snake see that made them not to bite Moses? It's in your Bible. Right? That he told him, lift up a serpent. Is it not true? Look at how people were immune in the Bible. Things were happening to others. Elijah, there was famine. He never was even concerned about the famine. Because he knew that nothing would happen to him. There was famine in Samaria. Elisha came. He was not saying, Ay, I'm dying. Give me food. He came and saw women eating their children and said, what happened? There was another mystery that gave him supply. Brothers and sisters, there is a way out 
of every situation in your life you can come to a man of god to pray for you but you can just come as if you are coming to somebody who manufactures charm do you know even if jesus appears right now there are people who encounter him and still go back unchanged yes absolutely don't you think because he's jesus he will change the law is still the same if you cannot honor his representatives then you do not honor him the result will still be the same who told look at how many parents please you're a pastor how think of how many parents in your church or how many elderly people have come to meet you to say man of god you see let me tell you something many people just believe that ministers and, and, and newspapers have made this happen they believe ministers of the gospel are daft people fraudulent people how to manipulate money from members and enrich themselves that's the mindset newspaper gives and many people carry that faulty mindset and some of us as young as we are that's our thinking look how our families are suffering you pray individually and say god help god said i answered the prayer sins open your eyes and see you have ignored ministries that can wipe your tears you are there a, 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 a program that you will finish five years you are still there seven years on your verge of moving you have never said for once can i not is there no system in the kingdom to bail me out for this cause i'm just sharing with you one mystery i think this is the cheapest of all mysteries because you don't even have to be intelligent to access this i have watched with shock the way i have ministered to people and their lives have changed a, a woman gave a testimony and this is true this is I, do, I, I don't mean it in any idolatry the woman said her daughter had been telling her to listen to one koinonia message and she said she always used to ignore it because you know she had problem with praying in tongues and all of that you, you know what i'm saying and one day things got bad and she said she was listening to one message in her dream that her daughter was listening to and then god was you know using my voice to just challenge her and say go and listen to that message and change your story she said she told her daughter to transfer it into her phone listen there was someone that had owed her for a long time as soon as she transferred that text message just the text as in uh, you know how it, you transfer a message it just touched her phone that was how the person called her and said where are you come and meet me at the bank the woman said this is a lie what is going on here it will only work for those who already have honor presiding them otherwise you will pass it like this and move on. when the child of the shunammite woman died she was not confused she knew where to run to she said saddle your ass he said don't stop whoever asks you is all well say it is well and he sent gehazi gehazi came and looked at the woman he says oh well she says well give me a chance i know the person i'm looking for and she went there and said you represented something in the spirit that brought this child otherwise this child would never have come know what to do with this child she put his office under pressure elisha tried everything spoke the child refused to wake up and he took his mantle he said even if it's for me to be foolish see there is a way you can honor a man of god and put pressure on his office not anointing his office it will force him to release something into your life when i say honor i don't mean money a deep a deep seated there are few men of god i've met in my life and the way i honored them when they were speaking and blessing me i knew it came from their spirit I'll find somewhere to stop because I want us to pray. Brothers and sisters, results are possible in the spirit. It's not a matter of luck. It's time for you to start knowing what you are not doing. The mystery of the communion. Many of us take communion just as something they do in church. Get me wafers. Get me zobo. Okay, there's five alive. Bring it. And they're like, oh God, thank you. And you just threw it. You just took breakfast. Whereas it has delivered a lot of people. Tight thing. You do it, but not with understanding. So the moment promise comes to stand here or anybody, you just you are just waiting. Those who are tight as you come and stand. And although you are supposed, you are doing something spiritual, it's not working. Because it's not done. The Bible says, honor the Lord. He didn't say bribe him. You squeeze your envelope you just come and stand and say oh yeah god take no 
when Abraham met Melchizedek, king of Salem, that ancient city. Listen, do you know it was after he gave the tithe, immediately God spoke to him and said, fear not. He was teaching him a mystery. He said, I'm about to bless you. It takes courage to be prosperous because you are about to be controversial. So fear not. There is something I'm about to open in your life that will make people say, well, when did it happen? He said, don't be afraid. I know I'm about to bless you, but my first instruction is fear not. You have done something that is about to bring prosperity. People will not understand the mystery. So be courageous to take the criticisms because I'm about to change your life. He said, I am your exceeding great reward. Abraham is so intelligent. The moment God said, I am your exceeding great reward, it, the, Abraham started thinking generational blessings because he knew that blessing was too much. He said, God, so let's talk about my future because I know that a, a man is a failure until he has a successor. You are now beginning to speak generational. Where is the child? And God says, ah, who is this man that, ha that has my mind? That's how to do business with God. You have so aligned, you understand the language of God. Look at what Solomon did. When it came to Solomon, Solomon said, Lord, give me an understanding heart. I am little. Let me lead your people. He knew where to touch God. Ah, God said, you didn't ask for the life of your enemies. Gave him riches, wealth, and honor. Gave him. You see why Solomon was blessed? He had understanding understanding it was an impartation just one mystery i've shared with you do you know if you hold on to this mystery this law of honor this year alone you will get more results than many people get in their lifetime i promise you just this law just this law just this law something you are ignoring is allowing tragedies to continue in your life something you are refusing to hear is keeping you bound sister it's not like a man cannot come there is something you are ignoring if you will make that adjustment tonight God will surprise you there are brothers here there are things you are ignoring you don't pay attention to instructions there are people inside and outside you don't approach God with a stubborn heart. You approach God with a childlike heart. Please, please, Koinonia, hear me. I'm about to pray for you. For heaven's sake, believe the things you hear me say. I love you too much to mislead you. Gentiles, please give us Isaiah 60 again. Verse 3. This is the year that Gentiles should come to your light. This is the year it should happen. That you see somebody get up and come and meet you. I mean, Gentiles coming to your light. They come with their blessings. When Jesus was born, the wise men saw his star. They started looking for it with gold, frankincense. When they looked at Jesus, they looked at a baby, but they were wise enough to know this is not a baby. They started bowing down. They didn't wait until he became an adult. They didn't say, let's see, let's watch if he becomes a serious man. They knew that this guy is the one that was prophesied and they started bowing down. If wise men could bow to a baby, bow to certain principles and change your life forever. Hallelujah. Do you believe what I shared with you tonight? Please. The body of Christ is not lacking revelation. What we are lacking is understanding. And the grace to do to live by the truth we know he said now that ye know these things happy are you if you do them i now see why god constrained me i was to start another series i mean an explosive series and god was just constraining me no let the people get this thing otherwise you keep dumping revelation after revelation and you know what i'm doing to you the more i keep giving you revelations without probing your reception a time will come you will be so puffed up of knowledge without any result and it will be dangerous hallelujah Saul Kai. oh my goodness Saul's donkey was missing his father Kish brothers and sisters hear me there was no hope of finding that donkey I hope you know 
Naturally speaking. Three days, they could not find the donkey. And they say, you know what? Let's not waste our time. There is a man. There is a man. This man, there is a prophet. There is a man of God. And they said, ah, there's nothing to take to him. They were smart enough. And the moment they went to the gate, at the gates, they saw him. And he looked at them. Do you know what he told them? He said, go and wait for me and I will tell you everything in your heart. Do you know what is a mountain to you? Is within the grace of somebody to stamp it for you. What looks like a mountain? You are there complaining about house rent and God is saying, no, 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 no. Everybody is growing, but there are people who have been graced to trivialize your challenges if you have the eyes to see. Look at, at once they met Samuel. Samuel said, I will tell you every, he didn't say I will sit down for counseling. He said, just go up there, wait for me. I will tell you what is in your heart. And when he went there, their biggest problem became the smallest. He said, I know you came for restoration. Forget about that. That's not the issue. The donkey has been found. Is that a human being? You think that's a human being talking? No, that's a system. It's not a man. It's a system in a human body. The same thing with Melchizedek. You think Melchizedek was just a man? Just a man older than Abraham? How can a man bless a man and, and say possessor of heavens and earth? Can a man bless another man like that? A man that even Christ associated himself with. The Bible says his priesthood is after the order of Melchizedek. Read your Bible and see all these strange men. Elijah, Noah. I've taught you. Do you know what it means for a man to build an ark that is equivalent to three stadiums? Three stadiums. Story building. Three stadiums alone. In hundred years he built it. Is that a normal human being? Made of gopher wood. So you know why he cursed his son. I've told you, he didn't curse his son just because he saw his nakedness. There was something the son saw. It's a mystery. Are we together now? When Jezebel was rising to judge people, Elijah shows up. The Tishbite, the Bible calls him. You think that's a normal human being? He appears again and he appears again in Revelation. What of Enoch, the seventh man from creation? He used to walk among them and one day they didn't find him. Just imagine one day we don't find Aaron. No grave, no nothing. It's after he leaves we may say, ah, so this guy we have been calling Aaron. That's what happened to Jesus when he resurrected. People looked at him and said, my goodness, so it is true. See, when we get to heaven, one of the shock for people is when God shows the, the spiritual content of some of the people that were walking on the earth. Some of us will put our hands on our head. And say I lived with this guy forever I, he was my roommate yet I didn't have the eyes to see I was in his church I was even an usher there was capacity like this to help me look at Gehazi foolish man if you wanted money if if you are with a master that blesses somebody and you want money is it not to kneel down and beg rather than going to lie you see why he's foolish very stupid man. That's why he didn't receive any mantle. A man who can wipe a rich man's story. Wouldn't you just kneel down and say, my father, change my story. And he said, is it not because the Lord has anointed you to be king? Poured oil upon him and say, as you go, you will find two men. They will appear from nowhere. The word created them. Look at how these guys manipulated nature at, their, at the frequency of their will. They were like God. They laughed at Elisha and said, you have bald head. He, he created a bear, a sheep bear. It came out, ate the children and disappeared. What kind? The Bible says in Hebrews 11, it said the earth is not worthy of this kind of people. You see them walk. The earth is not worthy. Oh no. Something you are ignoring is destroying your life. We are going to pray. The purpose of this teaching tonight is to let you know that between you and your mountain is a mystery. Is a mystery away. It can keep that mountain there forever or shatter it. I have met people who changed my life in less than 24 hours. 
less than 24 hours less than 24 hours what are you ignoring some of you your family members have ignored you that's why things have not changed they have refused to admit that there is an anointing on your life so every time you step in your neighbors are there benefiting from your grace but they have refused to acknowledge it brothers and sisters although they are your mothers and fathers things will never change until they come into that recognition please rise up on your feet this prayer session we're entering i want you to pray with all your heart lift up your hands and thank the lord for this word tonight illumination the grace that comes hear me when men have an understanding the grace that comes when people can honor thank you lord for this word I like you to lift your voice and pray and say lord i know that the mountain before me can live i just don't know how to let it go but i want it to go in this year lift your voice and pray this mountain standing before me there is a way out pray lift your ministry lift your academics lift your job Lift everything before God. Lord, I know I've been trying and trying and trying. I've been trying. I've done all I know to do. But tonight I admit. I admit. I, just show me, oh God, show me what I need to do. Those outside, make sure you are praying. Jesus brought you here to change your life forever. Light, 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 light. Sika barato soto predege de bele de bos. Saka prata se tele pratika de koshoto prada na bala na bala na bala. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to mention every area of your life where you know sincerely that you have not seen results. Be very sincere with God and say, Lord, there has to be a way out of this. Lift your voice and pray. Please take it serious, Koinonia. Lord, I've not seen the anointing in my life. Pray. Lord, I'm tired of struggling. I lay hands on the sick and nothing happens. I prayed and fasted, nothing is happening. Lord, my finances. I've read books, but there's something I've not seen. It's just not changing. No matter what I do, I know something is wrong. Lord, favor. I've not caught the mystery of favor. Everybody hates me. Everybody runs away from me. Even those who want to help me change their mind. Something must be wrong somewhere. I admit tonight that I need help. Lord, I pray for my academic. It's been from one tragedy to another. There, there's got to be a way out. Mamproto soto predege de bele de bosh. E kabarada balada basanda da barakata shada bela de bosh. Emprus kele bras kabaria takaroto sudo balada ba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, we are still praying. I like you to pray and say, Lord, I make a vow before you. I'm on a strategic project to eradicate ignorance and confusion in my life in strategic areas i ask for grace i ask for grace pray 
grace lord i will sit down with this issue of finances and resolve it once and for all i will sit with this issue of powerlessness this issue of lack of church growth this issue of not having a message to preach this issue of failure all around Abarato soto prende ke debala da bos. Rakata barada bos. Come on, be angry with the challenges in your life and pray. Pray, pray. I was studying. I wanted to find out the secret of church growth. I've heard people say it. I've listened to them. I couldn't quite get the light they got and one time I was praying and the Spirit of God took me to mark one two three and it was like an anointing that came I knew I had gotten it I knew I had gotten it when people talk about prosperity most of the scriptures in Deuteronomy 8 18 I've not gotten light from that scripture of God and God will take you through that word to somewhere else that becomes your access point out Are we together two more prayer points you're going to pray and say lord every principle i have ignored that is responsible for where i am now i receive grace to make amendments go ahead and pray many of us have ignored the law of honor you have not discerned the body lord i cry for grace tonight every principle that should have opened a door for me i ignored it out of pride i ignored it out of ignorance i i ignored it out of complacency and laziness tonight oh god i cry tonight oh god i cry pray pray Hallelujah. He said, I commend you. I commend you to the word of his grace. He said, He's able to make you wise and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified you have ignored the word and you've gone around looking for things that only the word can give or you have been in close touch with the word but just growing in knowledge without revelation revelation is not knowing what scripture has said revelation is knowing how to make it work in your life that's revelation god said it's not revelation it's prophecy it takes understanding to convert prophecy into manifestation. God said is prophecy, not revelation. Revelation is where you have caught the mystery of translating that prophecy into a into a, a manifestation in your life. Many of us are carrying God said wonderful, but prophecy has a dynamics to its manifestation. There is a there is an alignment. There is a path you have to play. Please pray again and say, Lord, what have I ignored that is responsible for where I am? Open my eyes. I will make amends. I will make amends in the name of Jesus Christ. Pray. Pray. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm about to pray for you. Do you know that there is a relationship between soul winning and answered prayer? Are we together? This is just one mystery that can explain the reason why many of us are not getting results in prayer. There is a direct relationship 
between saving souls genuinely and answered prayers. A man can save souls and walk his way into unending breakthrough. Just like that. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 12, right? When you read from verse 3, there about, it says, They that be wise will shine like the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars even forevermore. That's a mystery. That any man who is committed to turning men to righteousness must shine as the stars. He said, he that winneth souls is wise. And Solomon, speaking of wisdom, said, with me are riches, wealth, and honor. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. He said, by me kings reign and princes decree justice. Just for winning souls, you are entitled for a baptism of wisdom. And many of us want to be wise. We want to do all of that. And you watch sinners go to hell. You are coming for meeting and you watch people around. You are not passionate. You are embarrassed. The Bible says, He that is ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of him before my father. Not on the last day. He is before the father making advocacy for you. He says, I will be ashamed of him before my father. Are we together now? Say, Lord, I receive grace to be doggedly involved in anywhere your heart is. Many of us don't know that the key to get God's heart is be involved where his heart is. God is in the business of making sure many come to righteousness. You can't stand in your camp alone and say, God, come and give me tea. Come and give me bread. And God is saying, the time is running out. There are people going to hell. This is the direction I'm facing. If you want me to see you, turn around and come here. Don't just stand behind there. Lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, let, let me run at your heartbeat. Let me run at your heartbeat. Let me be involved in what you are involved in. Not just my own agenda. Let me be involved in what you are involved in. Souls. Souls. Transform. Souls. Genuinely saved. Souls. Established in righteousness. Hallelujah. Listen. Please be committed to soul winning. Not just preaching to people. Be committed and bring them to the house of God to be established. Do this for just one month and you will see breakthroughs that will surprise you. Believe me when I tell you this. Believe me. Look at churches that don't win souls. They never grow. They never grow. There's no reason to grow. See, if you say you are growing spiritually, ask yourself, what parameter am I using to measure my growth? If you think you are growing spiritually just because of complicated bombardment of Rema, you are fooling yourself. At the end of it, you will cry. A small child who may not know much, but do much with what he or she knows, will be standing and excelling. Just like you see certain people doing tutorials and talking and speaking English, and they will write the exam and get 40. And one obedient student, he follows the examples as taught. Every, he may not be so smart, but he's just too obedient to be average. I open up the gates of cities, the gates of territories, and I speak in the name of Jesus. A level of grace. May your saxophone stop being an instrument. May it become a weapon from today. A weapon of healing. You and your entire team. Let it burn like fire in your spirit. Like fire upon your spirit. Never to be the same. You will sing with the sounds of the heavens. And everybody that hears that sound 
will know that your communications are of the spirit. There is a grace that lifts men. You can try, you can struggle, you can beg, you can connect. No. See, every time, listen, every time you see consistent results, regardless of the situation, there is an anointing. Please, learn this. There is an anointing. There is an anointing that translates men, swallows up the weaknesses of people. May that be your testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ, God will give you wisdom. Let your ministry enter another dimension. I pray for character for all of you. See, this is usually the problem. Listen, let me, I'm, I'm teaching, you are learning. The most important aspect of the anointing is the character to maintain it. Not the anointing. Because you see, the anointing is very charismatic. The most powerful ability of a man of God is self-control. The ability to keep quiet even when you have what to say. The ability to walk within the jurisdiction of the grace apportion there are many of we people we don't have self-control especially over an opportunity like this everybody now wants to show and you do not know where god has stopped and you want to continue to stretch it to show you are anointed and then you step out of the spirit and begin to walk in the flesh because some of you are here for this same anointing but you see the, it's not just the anointing believe me this is not an issue of prayer and fasting it's an issue of knowing god and understanding his ways god is only committed to backing what he instructed if he did not direct you he will not back you hallelujah God bless you. John chapter 3 verse 16. Let's just look at scripture quickly. And then we'll pray. There is a lot that God wants to do tonight. These guys have already stared the anointing. And you see the thing with the anointing is once he's stared, it doesn't stop. It doesn't know whether it's miracle service or Easter. John chapter 3 verse 16. I like you all to be sensitive. The anointing has been stared up in this place many of you do not know what the staring of the anointing is the moment your eye sees there is a relationship between your heart and your eyes so once your eye sees it immediately your spirit is open and the moment your spirit is open the spirit of god starts moving he doesn't care whether you are preached or not because that's his desire hallelujah and usually once the anointing starts moving it's very difficult to contain it because the hearts of people are open in the name of jesus i'm hearing the sound of thunder i know this is not physical i'm hearing a sound of thunder like lightning is coming upon people right now in the congregation why do i see this it's like the sound of thunder what I hear in my spirit.
Hallelujah. Please pay attention. The meeting is on. I'm seeing ministering spirits. It's a class of angels. I'm seeing them walk inside and outside. Just let me do what is happening. Ministering spirits. There are not many times I see these kinds of angels. I'm seeing them walking inside and outside. Ministering spirits. They are angels that impart strange levels of graces. Ah, ah, yeah. They will touch you where you are. It will be like fire. They will touch you where you are. As they touch you, they release your miracles. As they touch you, they release your breakthroughs as they touch you they break those chains nah. they are touching you on behalf of families touching you on behalf of families skatapakatabara <laughs> direction that's what i hear god is giving men direction it's like an anointing it will come on you outside and inside direction and end to that confusion right now it's coming like light but then you will hear him direct you direction 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 what is that area of confusion his light shines upon it right now for marriage direction 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 for way to settle down geographic location direction is coming by the holy ghost direction somebody is praying and say lord show me the lord is saying i am showing you it's coming upon your spirit i'm giving you direction on what to do direction hallelujah i'm seeing the names of people written on a paper and put under a stone and the lord is saying take it out lord where are those people whose destinies have been buried as i'm speaking right now inside and outside right now right now as i speak by the power of the holy spirit right now where you are sitting you will receive a visitation i pull it out this is a miracle service I pull it out now. Oh yes, release that lady. I see it in the spirit. Release that lady right now. 
release that lady's destiny something is happening to you where you are something is happening to you where you are begin to receive it by faith like the dew of heaven resting in this place inside and outside Lord we receive what you are doing sit down if you can those under the anointing just leave them John 3 16 I just want to The Lord has just healed a lady of a breast lump. You have a lump in your left breast. Check it right now. Check it right now. Check it and come out right now. Right now. I don't know why God is just interrupting. Please check it. Check it. Check it right now. In fact, I see three people. Check it. This is a family. Please, we are not playing games. Inside and outside. I'm seeing three ladies who came with like a lump on their breast check it right now that devil has gone back to hell please check it quickly and come out if they are under the anointing when they, when they are all right let them come out very quickly let them come out quickly augustina augustina i'm hearing a name like augustina augustina there's someone like that you can just make your way to the front quickly Augustina the Lord is judging evil in your family this is oppression this is what I'm seeing oppression as is happening to you there's somebody outside this same anointing is touching the person outside the second overflow the anointing of the spirit is touching somebody outside the Lord is bringing judgment to wickedness because I'm seeing that this is something that has to do with witchcraft it has tied your life and your family down and the Lord is telling me release Augustina release Augustina release Augustina release Augustina and as it's happening to you it's also happening to that other lady. 
in the name of Jesus I release you right now from every chain that has held you be released your family be released it's time for you to testify I release both of you prophetically in the name of Jesus Christ every door the devil has tied let it be opened by the anointing of the Spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah hallelujah I'm seeing a whole family that came there is a family God wants me to minister to you are five five people I don't know if there is a mother I'm seeing a family with five people who came from somewhere and the Lord wants me to minister to them you are five in all you're five in all Please, when you identify them they can come up so that we will just minister to them very quickly hallelujah for God so loved the world for God so loved the world and the Bible says that he proved that love by giving his only begotten son please listen don't worry about what is happening just let me have your attention please he says he gave his only begotten son this we can take it from there that that statement he gave his only begotten son is the summation of the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ are we together now Please help her wrap her I command that spirit to leave her right now now and never return in the name of Jesus release her family release I see a lot of money being tied release it now as you go in the name of Jesus the Christ Hallelujah. so the Bible says he gave his only begotten son hallelujah for God so loved the world. The word there is cosmos. The social system that has to do with people. Listen please. And has to do with the entire territory. The social system. He says for God so loved the world. And he proved that love. Listen, listen. Because love must be manifested to be appreciated. Are we together now? And the Bible says that he gave his only begotten son and please don't be confused there is a name that son is called jesus because there are many people who can preach to be the begotten of the father but the only begotten son who after his resurrection now became the first begotten right until the resurrection of man he was the only begotten please listen you see everything about this bible was pointing to this very revelation the revelation of jesus christ everything the book of revelation says the revelation of jesus christ not the revelation of a formula or a principle so the law the prophets abraham samson isaac judges everything was tracing to the genealogy of Jesus Christ and then the Bible says that he manifested himself before people and he was full of grace and truth listen 
Jesus came with a message and his message was very simple he said repent the word repent is not the word turn from your sins no preachers preach that as a result of lack of understanding the word repent is an indication of completely turning from a direction to another please just be patient with me this family or minister to you. are we together now turning from one direction to the other but the first step to that turning is acknowledging a person his sacrifice and his government that's the first step and then you begin to walk in accordance to his principles only when you do that are you said to have repented many people have not repented they want to repent they think they have repented they hope they are repenting the first message that was preached after the resurrection of christ he said men and brethren what shall we do and this is what the apostle said repent for the remission of your sins so the bible says he gave his only begotten son you laid aside your majesty gave up everything for me suffered at the hands of those you have created you took all my guilt and shame when you died and rose again now today in heaven if you know it just sing it with me I really want to worship you, my Lord. You have won my heart and I am yours. Forever and ever, I will love you. You are the only one that I want you. your life. Like you give your ATM for someone to use and withdraw money. He gave, he donated. And Jesus came upon the earth and he began to do many great things. Listen, Jesus did not just come. Please, I want you to pay attention. It's going to be very brief and we'll begin to pray. Jesus did not just come to show us how God looked alone. He came to show us how we should look. So when he walked upon the earth, he was the prototype of God's idea of the man he had created. He was invincible, the Bible records. Above situations, above circumstance, with unlimited power, yet a man of extreme self-control. He knew when to speak and he knew when to keep quiet. There would be so many sick people like the 10 lepers he would heal one and just walk away because his desire was not to show power his desire was to do the will of the father he was more interested in bringing satisfaction to his father than building a ministry people tried to say look build a ministry and he said no 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 i can of my own do nothing as I see my father do. So he came to show us the prototype of the true Christian life. A life that is completely yielded to the will of the father. Void of self-ambition. Void of a desire for vain glory and personal gratification outside of Christ. A life that is crucified with Christ. Are we together now? And then... The Bible begins to describe to us that which happened today many years ago. We know it as the passion of the Christ. It started from the communion where they came into him by covenant so that they would authorize him. John chapter 6 says, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you cannot be part of me. You cannot have my life. So while they were taking the communion, 
they were giving him access to carry the sin of man upon himself and then the bible says he went to gethsemane and there he cried he prayed until tears were like drops of blood afterwards he was ready to be crucified and brothers and sisters i know that we celebrate easter today is good friday pain is what made today good are we together sacrifice is what made today good if he refused to lay down his life listen when Pilate looked at him and said don't you know i have the power to free you he said, ah, 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 ah. He said no man has this power except it is given unto him by my father he said i have the power to lay it down and the power to pick it up again in other words i was not coerced my love for you made me to sacrifice my life my reputation and everything we talk a lot about good friday but we never know what made it good this is what made it good that a man gave his son then the son gave his life are we together now it's one thing to give your child it's another thing for the child to agree he can refuse jesus had the right to refuse in fact he was tempted to negotiate it he said father if it be possible you are the all wise god there is another way you can do this thing but then he remembered nevertheless i told you the hallmark of sonship is servanthood the true proof that you are a son is that you can give up sonship to become a servant are we together now the father gave jesus jesus gave his life and don't be confused he gave his blood he gave his righteousness are we together now he gave up his position and when he was doing that he had you in mind listen listen he never went to the cross because of anything he did of himself the bible says he was a man touched with the feelings of our infirmity yet without sin but he took your place because the bible says we all like sheep have gone astray right he said every man has gone his own way with our ideas about god our ideas about success would you give our mother a chair please let her just sit down i'll minister to you in a moment please at least let her just sit down hallelujah well all of you you can sit down i'll call you now they are all looking at me um sit down especially this my friend friend how are you what's his name Aaron Kelvin just get somewhere that they can sit around and I'll attend to you now just five minutes let me establish what hallelujah so please come sir I offend a government and they are about to destroy me listen please about to destroy me and the bible testifies that i have no power in myself and then someone comes and while i'm on my way to destruction he interrupts and he says i love you too much to let you keep gambling and trying your way this is what i want you to do stand back and watch me pay the price and while he was on the way while they were flogging him in his mind he was saying mankind i hope you are watching this would have been you i hope you are watching i hope you are watching the scars as he began to bleed he said i hope you are watching see if two people come and they tell you they love you the best answer to give those two people is i'm watching because love is a verb are we together now i am what all kinds of things have told you they love you but they left you but jesus said watch my love i'm not going to make noise about it first stand back and while they flogged him he said if it's for you i will still go the extra mile and they flogged him the father gave him he gave his health the father gave him 
he gave his prosperity the father gave him when we say his life let's break it down what what is in his life that he gave because that's what he gave you what was in the life of jesus the ability to reign and rise above sickness and diseases the father gave him he gave it away in exchange the bible says he was rich but he gave it are we together now he had a reputation of dominion but he laid it aside i hope you know that they stripped him naked the covering you see around is just for social reasons when you're watching movies a 33 year old man naked children watched him adults watched him people mocked at him and said you claim to be a king and he said this is all for you are we together blood dripping out from every part of his body every time he was tempted to give up he said no if i give up where i stop is where you must continue and i know that even if it was for the last nail you still will not be able to take it see listen if you think what happened on the cross is what jesus just died for physically you'll be deceived because there are human beings who have been crucified what he stopped you from was not the physical activity it was what was happening in the spirit you can do the physical one i guarantee you people have been crucified but you don't know what that meant in the spirit a lot was interplaying in the spirit while that was happening he became adam from gethsemane from gethsemane to the cross he was no longer the christ he was jesus adam the very man of sin mortality came upon him please listen and the father kept watching he had given him and he knew that it is more blessed to give than to receive so there was no negotiation about receiving the blessing was that he would bring many sons into glory are we together now when they took him to that cross and they nailed him as his blood began to drip upon the earth and in that excruciating pain it was a way of torturing criminals he was not just looking at mary and john he was looking at you he was looking at me he was looking at every witchcraft in our family and every ordinance of darkness and he said if it's for you i will do it but he made a very interesting statement we are going to establish tonight three words that represented victory it is finished oh hallelujah i didn't study english but i know that when a man says it is finished it is finished is a reality that is present and continuous forever not it was finished you would have said the condition for it finishing has changed so we have to start another one it is finished the question is what is the it that has been finished first that inability to access the father we call it lack of righteousness he said that error is finished That, 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 that Christianity that has to do with ceremonial cleansings, having to atone for your sins by your own strength, I brought it to an end. That ability of saying qualify and come to God, he said it is finished. You now will come through my own invitation, my own access. Like I organize a program and i invite someone and while you are about to drive him i say no 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 that's my guest come but you are not only his guest he also made you the one to be celebrated please listen there is a dimension of this we have not learned and this is what i want to teach us when jesus went to hell and met satan a discussion transpired and satan said remember adam and he said i don't remember adam i am him don't you see this is adam and satan knew it was true 
Because only Adam had the right to collect the key. No other man could collect the key. And so he went as the second Adam and said, you killed Adam and every man that came from him. Let me have the keys. Revelations 1 verse 1. When you read downwards, I am he that was dead, but now I am alive and I hold the keys. He collected the keys. Listen. Access to the earth, access to dominion, access to God's life. That's the most important part. The life of God. I'm going to explain it. When he resurrected, watch this. Did you know that if he just started walking and doing all of the things he did, man would not be able to partake of it because he had not ascended to heaven. It would just be that he was victorious. And then the Bible says, according to the book of Hebrews, that he went to heaven as the high priest, the lamb, the sacrifice, as everything. And then he took his blood, poured it upon that tabernacle, and said, Father, you are just for seeing that man does not have access to divine health and all of this because you are a just God. Your throne is founded upon righteousness and justice. The Bible says they are the foundations, meaning there's no negotiation that will bend it. But now he says, every time you think justice, let mercy begin to speak. Watch this. I really want you to get a revelation of this. It will change your life. Every time the voice of judgment, the voice of mess or of, of justice begins to speak, I will not fight it. But remember that I not only paid the price, I paid the price for everybody who will be an offender on this path. Are we together now? When that happened, a coronation happened in heaven. We see that coronation. The psalmist gave us a revelation. And from Philippians chapter 2, the Bible says a name, an office, an identity was given to him in heaven. To sit upon that throne. Are we together now? And the Bible says anything that has to do with man's redemption, man's vindication must pass through him. Meaning... A man is only condemned when he condemns that man. A man is only justified when he justified. The father put it in his office. Are we together? Watch what he did. When he sat down on that throne, he told man, there is another dimension you do not know. I know that I paid the price for you, but I want to teach you another dimension. We paid it in covenant. Listen. You did not participate in anything. But out of my love, I took you and made it as though in me, you were the one who paid that price. So not only did he die for you, you died in him. Are we together now? So in Christ, every man's iniquity, every man's um, basis for accusation was nailed in Christ. Paul saw this in Galatians 2.20 and he said, I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, he said, I live. Yet not I, but Christ it's an exchange. He died for me. Now I live in him. In other words, the day Jesus Christ dies, there is no reason why I should be alive because we are in him. So my life is no longer something I get outside of him. My life is an overflow of what I have received from him. And he so designed that from that point, hence, listen, Everything I derive will be because of him. In him and with him. My joy is because of him. My prosperity is because of him. Please listen. My peace is because of him. So at no point in this kingdom would I be found leaning on my own strength. Because the moment I lean on my own strength, 
the judgment of the law catches up with me the only basis for vindication is to be in him this is what he said he says he that abides in me and i abide in him he said the same will bear much fruit he said for without me the word without means outside of me and everything that i have done ye can do nothing the basis of the believer's victory is what christ did on the cross but not just what christ did on the cross because that's what a lot of people say oh i know what he did no let's continue john 3 verse 16 please give it to us so that we can finish up it's not enough to know what jesus did that's not where i'm going tonight this is the part that concerns you that whosoever believes believes what no 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 it didn't say that whosoever believes anything there is a specific thing you have to believe to have life you can believe jesus is a prophet it never gives life you can believe jesus is a healer it doesn't give life are we together he says believe in him who is the him who is the him no you see you see where we miss it we have been believing in rubbish who is the him who he said god no believing in god doesn't give you life who is the him that's where i want us to get to tonight you, you see that our confusion is the reason why we cannot manifest the reality of god's life we believe but what do you believe are we together you can believe the shepherd believe me you will not be saved believing in the shepherd does not bring salvation are we together believe in him who is him the bible i love the way the bible puts it as many as believed in him see that brothers and sisters i am many things and all of those dimensions can give you different operations of me are we together a child believes a father a worker believes a ceo a jimmy's daughter believes in her father she doesn't believe in a ceo we believe in a jimmy adegbeye the multi-millionaire that's what you believe you will never get fatherly love from that dimension are we together now you may get financial advice you may get intelligence you may get all of this i believe in professor femi you will get the intellectual dimension there is a dimension of god you must believe to have life many of us have believed him as a healer you can be healed and still go to hell please hear me many of us have believed him as a savior you can have i mean you can have a what do we call it a, as a shepherd what dimension of him have you believed i will tell you now ready there is a dimension of him you must believe to be saved whosoever calls upon the name of the lord shall be saved what is lord the word lord means a conqueror are we together now listen please it's not just a savior like the one who died he didn't resurrect as a savior he died as a savior he did not resurrect as a savior he resurrected as lord a winner a champion one qualified to transfer what he has and the bible says whoever believed that listen whoever believes in him that name that was given he said he shall not perish the word perish there is not the word go to hell are we together because the bible says whoever does not believe is already condemned shall not perish here it is but have money but have the word everlasting is a wrong interpretation everybody has everlasting life 
Everlasting life is life that does not end. Your, your life does not end. You only change location to continue the living. That's why we never say, will you spend eternity? You must spend it. The question is where? Are we together now? Thank you. Don't mind this, my funny friend. Where will you spend eternity? Not will you spend. You must spend it. The word eternal life there is the word divine life. Is the Greek word zoe. I know you've heard it. Many of us quote it, but just listen. The word zoe, listen. Let me describe it for you. It's a life that does not want depend on any external input for its sustenance. It's a life that has the capacity to reproduce anything it needs within itself. Are we together now? Like you do not have to source for anything. Within that system is self-sufficiency. Within that system is the ability to be any and everything. That life can become health. That life can become victory. That life can become wisdom. So when the Bible says we have life, it doesn't mean we just have a new way of breathing in and out. No. Something came upon you that all of a sudden translates you. Please, I want you to believe this. The Bible says the focus in the whole story is the believing part. Whoever believes in him, the Lord, who was a savior, became a conqueror, now sits as a king. The father gave the son. The son gave his life. Your job is to receive that life. When you receive that life in reality, the Bible says certain things will begin to change. You see, the life is a programming. The moment it enters you, it deconstructs itself to different dimensions. Please listen. The life of God is not just a vague thing that comes up. No, 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 no. It is the life that begins to open you up to the mysteries of the kingdom. It is the life you have received that begins to immune you from the activities of darkness. Many people have not received this life. They want healing, but they have rejected the life of God. Many people have come out for altar call. Father, I, I, I'm, I'm born again. I believe in you, this and that, but they have not received it. He said, as many as received. Brothers and sisters, you can reject it. Many seated here have rejected it. I give you my ATM card. You refuse to collect it. You can reject it. Yet you need what only my ATM card will give you. You can borrow money from Pastor Lawrence, borrow money from uh, a Promise and so on and so forth. And I say, take my ATM card. The point is, you don't just take it and hold it. When you take the card, something will make you turn behind and begin to read and follow. You see, the life of God is not, how do I put it now? It's not like something you just put in your pocket. All right, look at this. I have this handkerchief. So we say, I have the life of God. Do you have it? Yes, no. That's not the idea of the life of God. The idea of the life of God is like a programming. Something enters you and begins to walk in you. It is God who is at work in us to will and to do. So it's working. The moment the life enters you, it's like a genetic mutation. It starts altering your configuration. Are we together now? And the Holy Spirit is the custodian of that life. When he comes, he begins to open you up to the realities of the kingdom. All of a sudden, listen, because of that life, you are now spiritually alive. You can have the sensitivity to know that life was not supposed to be like this. Why am I always failing? You will never just know that ordinarily. It takes that life to open that awareness in you. Are we together now? It's like glasses. You all of a sudden start seeing life from another perspective. No, I'm not supposed to fail like this. I can't, I can't just be taking it like that again. Something must change. No, I've seen a trend in my family. People don't get married till they are 45. I'm noticing that something in my external environment is fighting the reality of that life. And the Bible says, 
he who has the son has eternal life zoe god's kind of life now watch this although you have that life it takes the ministry of the holy spirit please listen to open you up to the operation of that life so that you can receive the fullness of the benefits of that life this is where a lot of people miss it oh i have life i have life the same way you say i have a car the same way you say i have an atm card can you use it i have given it to you do you know how to activate the operation of that life do you know how to make that life work in you we have been taught that it works automatically no sir no sir you can claim to have the life and still die of sickness now this is where satan's ministry comes the thief cometh not but to steal to kill if you don't have anything he doesn't come to steal are we together now satan comes his first ministry is deception what is deception painting an untrue picture and convincing you to believe it so you believe that i do not have this life if i truly had this life i should not be sick are we together now if i have this life i should be doing exploits academically if i have this life now listen here is where the confusion has come in the body of christ there are those who are saying you have this life there are those who are saying you don't have this life you better fight your way into receiving it both of them are incomplete on one side you are seeing the supposed by faith you believe you know you acknowledge that that life is in you but then you are not seeing the difference the bible said should be produced are we together now this is the dilemma of many christians i gave my life to christ from the day i got born again my life has not changed it's been 10 years i will tell you why eternal life is being frustrated within you because you have not been taught how to release and activate the operation of the content of that life it's like buying a phone you admire it you look at it but you do not know how to work with it that was the lamentation of the psalmist in psalm 82 from verse 5 he says they know not not they have not they know not neither will they understand he said they grow in darkness and so the foundations of the earth are out of course the next verse says have i not said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high he says but you shall what die like mere men listen please listen an heir as long as he is a child does what the bible starts by calling him what an heir a partaker of an inheritance a partaker of a reality but it says as long as he's a child the word child here is devoid of strategy devoid of the ability to understand the operation of that process he said he differed not from a slave i can receive the life of god that contains health vitality prosperity and still be under a cause i tell you hear me brothers and sisters because we misunderstand the prophetic dimension of god's word therefore if any man be in christ he is a new creation but we do not know that the communications of god are twofold there is the prophetic communication of god speakings according to his realm of existence but there is the experiential manifestation of that prophetic word it is the nature of god to call things as though they already appear are we together now hebrews chapter 2 he put it very beautifully he said god had put all things under the subjection of man he said god did not leave anything left but he said as it is now we do not yet see all things are we together now so you have come to answer the altar call the life is in you but you went back and the exact same thing you know happens when a man is under a curse is happening to you 
Now you went to a pastor and said, Pastor, you said if I'm born again, this thing will leave. But you, the person said, yes, is it not in your Bible? We're all ready together. Now you are born again, brothers and sisters. But the truth is, if you will be sincere, you are still seeing those traces as if nothing happened to you. So it puts believers in a dilemma. There are those who are saying, keep believing that it's gone. One day it will go. Hey. Wonder shall never end. If you have that kind of ideology, you are in for trouble. And then on the other hand, there are those who act as though they really have nothing. So they are trying. They live per day. We survive today. Let's see how the war of tomorrow will be. I know that there will be all kinds of things. Are we together now? So although they read that there is victory in Christ, the truth is they don't believe it. They just know let's fight per day. They are the ones who suspect everybody and everything. If Sam looks at you like this, is a sign that he's an enemy. So they live their life with the consciousness of an aberrated perspective of warfare. And by warfare, they mean a consistent, never-ending contention. Both are wrong. Are we together? This is prophecy, but there is a place for the manifestation of prophecy. Jesus Christ has done everything he needs to do, but I have a role to play. Nobody gets saved just because Jesus died. You will go to hell. There is a response. Please listen. The idea of grace does not mean not participating. No. The idea of not participating in a process to call it grace is an aberration. Are we together? Uh huh. The difference between grace and the law is what kind of participation? There is a participation that is unto the flesh, there is a participation that is a response of faith. That is the participation that brings results. Are we together now? So if the Bible says, by tithing, you open your heavens. When I'm tithing, I'm not acting under the law. I'm not trying to do something. I am responding. There is a difference between doing something to gain righteousness. But in any case, there must be reception by faith. And that in itself is a participation. This looks very simple. But it's at the foundation of the lack of results and the miracles that many people are, are not receiving. I don't want us to waste this night and just get up and see people fall under the anointing and celebrate miracles and go back. I want you to live victorious. If all you think is healing, you will be frustrated. If all you think is on my own, think God's life. And all its content is a way. The life of God. That can become any and everything. Any and everything. Christ has been made unto me through his life wisdom. He's been made unto me strength. He's been made unto me prosperity. That life is the word. And as the word opens up, it shows me the dimensions of its operation. And then I look out first to believe. Number two, to respond. Everybody say believe. Say respond. This is your part as a believer. You, when you respond to what you do not believe, is a waste of time. So the Bible says, whoever believes in him, you receive. But that life begins to teach you certain things. And you respond to those teachings. Please listen to me. Part of what that life teaches you is that Satan is a trickster. He's a deceptive person. And he will not, just because you have life, leave you. The Bible says he left Jesus for a season. The next time he would come, he didn't come directly again. He came through Peter. And Jesus said, I still detect you. And the devil says, do not, I mean, God said, do not be unaware. Speaking through the apostle of the devil's strategy are we listening to me please 
because many people get up bragging. I'm not under any curse. I'm not under this. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the Lord. That's not a lie. But you have not learned how to participate in response to make that an experiential reality. So you will still brag around and die like mere men. Are we together now? I really believe in Jesus Christ and I really believe in his word. But I also believe in the principles that the revelation of his life releases. And my obsession is to always find out where is my part in this. Brothers and sisters, there is a part. There is a part that you have to play. Believing is not enough. Believing talks of conviction persuasion about the truth of a person or a statement but there must be a response your response is your action of faith so the bible says this in the book of hebrews there remained a rest a sabbath for the people of god in spite of what christ has done there still remains a rest and then it says let us therefore labor this is paul in the new testament what is the idea of labor push God aside. No. Let us find out our place of response. Let us therefore understand the operations of the kingdom so that we will know where our place of alignment is. And he says, whoever labors like that, there is a guarantee he will enter his rest. There is a way you will align that sickness will run away from your body. Believe me. It's not just by claiming. You will claim and be shocked. There is a way you respond. Remember during our time of fasting, we're showing you different mysteries. These are all the components that are called the life of God. Right? He gave you life. But it takes faith and it takes an operation of the spirit. So Satan has kept many people bound for two main reasons. One, they have rejected the life. And the solution to that is an altar call. I'm going to do that shortly before we start ministering. The second is he has kept people in delusion and ignorance. Never trivialize the role of deception. In a man's destruction deception the first deception is that you don't need to do anything again oh brothers and sisters hear me I fear God it's a big deception as free as salvation claims to be if you do not respond you are going to hell there is always a participation that's what we call koinonia everybody say participation if you will ever enjoy the healing dimension of God's life, there is a participation. If there will ever be prosperity, there is a participation. Now, the participation is a response of faith. God credits it as a response of faith, not an addition to what he has done. It's a compliment. So, he would see a sick body and say, your faith... You believed I am able to heal you. You were convinced based on the report you had. And now, I gave you an instruction. Waiting for your participation. You got up your faith. He calls it your faith. So what is your faith? Faith is the name given to the action you take. Based on your conviction of God's word. Believing is not faith. No, 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 no. Believing is the first step to faith. You can believe without having faith. A believer is not a possessor. A believer who responds is a possessor. There are so many people, listen to me, who are trusting God for all kinds of things here. I'm teaching you how to get results tonight. God is not a herbalist. There is a participation. Ejimi, this is a gift for you. What is he supposed to do? Watch this. He 
his response now he's standing up is a sign that he believes me i can choose to hide it please sit down sir sorry i'm using you hope i'm sorry i'm just doing this game with your husband hallelujah hey jimmy do you believe i'm having a phone and that phone is for you if you believe it walk up to me faith this is faith the walking to me although he has not seen it so he's putting my integrity to the line it's up to me to prove that i'm not lying so i bring it out if he comes to me listen if he comes to me and i say ah i'm playing he believed i'm the one who is a liar and the bible said god looks for anybody who is greater than him so that he will show you he's not playing games are we together now let's look at one scripture thank you sir romans chapter 8 please romans chapter 8 let's look at verse 35 romans 8 35 just that one scripture and then we'll take an altar call and begin to minister romans chapter 8 35 okay give us from verse uh, 32 32 thank you everyone please read if you are a christian if you are a child of god this is good friday well even if you are not a child of god read i will soon make an altar call one to read he that spared not stop who is the he now god is trying to make a statement and is tying the certainty of that statement to something he had done before it's like saying he that built this bridge in kaduna and built it excellently is about to build something so in case you doubt what i'm about to do find out whether i did that thing or not he's about to make a statement and he's saying don't you dare doubt me for what i'm about to say he that did not spare his what own son but delivered him up for who what's the next statement how shall he not with him also freely give us what this is god speaking he said look at me your healing is a lesser thing i gave jesus what is healing i gave jesus what is witchcraft if i did not if i spared my son then you will know that there are some things i can spare but i carried my son i gave him and now i have gathered you to give you healing and you are asking god this my this i've been bleeding for six months non-stop and god said if i spared not jesus i will not spare anything whatever it would take me to prove myself i will do it if it means me killing somebody i will do it i i gave my son who will i not be able to kill listen this is the basis for conviction so every time the devil is trying to say look 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 will that prophecy work just remember jesus jesus begged the father to have mercy the father refused so listen jesus said father reconsider the father said you are joking stay there and now god is saying i want to bless you and the devil is saying no and jesus is saying god is saying just believe me and watch how i will do anything it takes is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am yeah. is there anything too hard for me to do I am that I am Hallelujah If the father Did not give Jesus It's like a man Listen It's like a man who vowed to punish every offender And he saw his wife And the guy said I'm a just person And he punished his wife then somebody throws a and says, oh God, you know we are Nigerians. What do you think he's going to do? You say, that's my wife inside the gutter. I'm a military man. This is my wife. 
I paid the price for six months to get a yes from her. She's in that gutter. I don't know the consequence of my action. If you think I'm going to forgive you, listen, if it took God refusing to even give Jesus a chance for negotiation for your sake, then I assure you, whatever else it is that is holding you must leave you this night. Hallelujah. Do you believe me? We are going to pray and say, Lord, help my own belief. That, listen, listen, listen. That spirit that makes me keep wondering, can God do it? Listen, don't, don't make that foolish statement tonight. I, I was praying on the, tonight, before I came here, I was praying on the invitation card for my neighbor's wedding. If you know the story behind that dear woman, she shared it here, all kinds of things. When I met her, the devil was almost destroying her life. Had fibroid that was almost big like the size of a baby. She shared her testimony here. Supernaturally, that devil of fibroid came out the way a woman gives birth. It came out like that without surgery. And people were saying, ah, can you marry? Time has gone. Time has gone nonsense. I prayed for the card. And to the shame of the devil, we are dancing to the heavens on the 6th of May. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, your limitation is self-imposed. Satan is a deceiver. He comes to you and says, but can they really hear your voice? We are going to pray. The only prayer I want you to pray tonight is to challenge unbelief and say lord i lift my faith i'm ready to respond based on my conviction lift your voice and begin to pray i have a part to play i lift up that wall of unbelief please pray pray you are able are you praying sense the anointing of the spirit i like you to mention everything that must live tonight listen please just follow these instructions i told you your response is where your faith is there are things that should go don't just keep quiet and watch them the bible says speak to the mountain open your mouth and begin to mention them don't keep quiet Mountain of financial hardship. Mountain of cancer. Mountain of mediocrity. Oh, you must go, you must go. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Say, 
after me tonight in the name of Jesus the faith of God is at work in me I have the faith to receive I have the faith to believe I have the faith to respond please listen do you know what happened in Acts chapter 4 don't turn there the Bible says they went to a gate called beautiful please let me sit down sir watch this he says they saw a man who had been there and he, he he called on them for arms and he thought they were going to give him arms peter and john and he, he said silver and gold have i none he said but such as i have listen listen i give unto you what did he have he said in the name of jesus rise up and walk the man was there sit down he was nothing happened why response did he believe peter yes did he get a miracle no why he, he could not respond and the bible says when peter saw him he said who taught you faith he held his hand and said respond 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 and the bible says peter held his hand and he leaping stood the power of god is released at the point of response not before never before at the point of response when I began to minister here, the Lord was speaking to my spirit. Who gave me a guarantee that the power of God will move? But as I began to speak, I put pressure. It's left for him now to defend whether he really spoke to me or not. God will not just get up and act. Listen, it was God that put this miracle service. You're leaving your house to come is enough response already are you listening to me you're going to say lord i put pressure on your integrity you ask us to come we have come lift your voice and pray don't be afraid of saying it pray lord you ask us to come you are the one who anointed this meeting to be a miracle service now oh god we are here on his integrity we have come oh God that you prove yourself shake it up shake it up we have come we have come hallelujah hallelujah now keep standing everybody before we continue there are people here i don't want you to waste your time and i don't want to waste your time there are people here inside and outside in all the overflows outside you are yet to make this decision the bible says this is the testimony that god has given us eternal life he said and that life is in his son he says he who has the son has that life please we're out of time we have very few minutes and there is a lot to do now wherever you are you are saying man of god i have heard your word i have been struggling with this thing but tonight i truly want to dedicate everything my all to jesus christ or you are saying man of god i have come out for an altar call before but for some reason honestly the pressures of life have pushed me and i need to make my way straight with the lord i'm tired of where i am those two categories of people inside and outside i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come out here right now god bless you quickly please i'll count just one to five if the holy ghost is speaking to you don't sit down thinking about it make your way very quickly one two run run like there's fire on the mountain especially those outside please you need to run run to jesus as you stand here please keep talking to him don't just stand looking at me god bless you run to jesus oh win that war win that war tonight this is an issue of your destiny koinonia can you appreciate them 
this is a harvest for the king of glory you're saying lord i'm tired of living my life my own way mismanaging my life on this easter friday i give everything to you keep coming you are saying lord easter friday you die for god so loved me he died for me i'm tired of living a life that is not worthy of my calling there are still people outside please run and catch up quickly quickly as the holy ghost is speaking to you and say join them make your way quickly you're saying lord i'm tired tired of habits tired of addictions run to the cross come running come running come running to the mercy seat. keep coming hallelujah all of you in front in one minute i'd like you to talk to jesus christ please no smiling and pitching one another this is a serious issue please pray open your mouth by yourself and say lord i i come to you genuinely the lord is ministering to me that there are three ladies outside who should join them you wanted to go and one of your friends stopped you please friend be careful don't stand against anybody's salvation this night make your way to the front please and join them i'm seeing three ladies outside that the lord is calling one of you your friend was trying to stop you the devil is a liar please make your way to the front and then there are two others god is speaking to join them quickly before we start praying those of you in front here talk to your maker no man condemns you the blood declares mercy said no help me I'm not gonna let you go I'm not gonna let you sleep away You don't have to be afraid No man condemns you The mercy The mercy at me all of you in front some of you are crying i don't care what you have done this one decision remember jesus every time the devil tries to condemn you are you not the drunkard tell him the drunkard is that guy on the cross something is about to happen to you right now oh yes oh you slept with somebody before coming here you say well i don't know what you are talking about but i've been crucified with christ he looked at the woman he said where are thine accusers he said neither do i condemn you go and sin no more lift your right hand and experience the power of the blood the power of mercy you just sing there is a fountain filled with blood very softly as i pray for them hallelujah listen brothers and sisters jesus can change your life don't stand here just making an emotional decision to go back there is power in the blood of jesus say after me lord jesus from the depth of your heart say it again lord jesus i believe in you and this night i surrender everything my life my dreams my hopes my ambitions i surrender it to you i receive eternal life into my spirit i declare that from today i'm no longer a sinner i've been crucified with christ and i have his life right now jesus has paid the price i receive his life and i declare that i'm a new creation the old has gone i begin a new journey satan you no longer have any accusation 
against me i pray for you keep your hands lifted father on this good friday we present these souls as trophies to you this is a response to what jesus did oh receive these souls koinonia present these souls as trophies of victory trophies of victory this is the sacrifice the rewards of the sacrifice hallelujah i pray for you i declare that your sins are forgiven and the power of sin over your life is broken forever every guilt the devil uses i don't care what it is tonight the same way you wash a dirty cloth in fact the way you bring a new one that's how the pages of your life is he gives you a new beginning in the name of jesus christ hallelujah a big congratulations to you in the name of jesus now listen i want you to do this real fast so you join us i'm about to minister to people now and we're going to be very very fast hallelujah i'd like you to follow the gentleman there are people all around they will lead you outside we want your information please you are born again now christians don't tell lies make sure that you write your number you write your name just follow the instructions no fighting be patient until it gets to your turn they'll have your information and you quickly come back and join us in the service please do that as fast as possible so that um, you can participate fully in what is happening god bless you every other person begin to pray in the spirit rise up on your feet and begin to pray in the spirit and say lord my time for visitation is here i won't give up no i won't give up i'll keep pressing on till my answer comes i won't give up lord i won't give up i'll keep holding on until my change comes lord i won't give up lord i won't give up i keep holding on till my answer comes i won't give up lord i won't give up i keep pressing on until my change comes please write your prayer request very quickly and submit them let's do it quickly please one minute everybody if you have the prayer request of of i understand that koinonia is being streamed live right now can we honor god for that yes it's been streamed live we appreciate the media for their creativity and for all our online people we love you the same power that is working here is the same power that will work everywhere you are in the name of the lord jesus christ so please quickly quickly please your prayer request listen for those of us who are just coming i i don't want you to think this is some ritual believe me god answers prayers here god gave us a revelation hallelujah and the revelation was the revelation of hezekiah hallelujah when he took the threat letter and the bible says he put it before the lord and said lord behold their threatenings so please write it very quickly and then ushers let's be very fast please help some people with papers next time maybe from uh, maybe two or three months from now we'll try to create expectation cards so that you can expectation cards leave her john leave her whatever she wants to do just let her do hallelujah we're going to pray please quickly your loved ones please make sure the online community participate there's a god that answers prayers here remember we spoke about faith those outside ushers help them if i were you i would begin to prophesy over my request and say i wrote you because you must live my life or you must come into my life <laughs>
Hallelujah. Now please begin to pass your request very quickly. Very quickly. Very quickly. My goodness. I tell you it's like a cloud that is heavy over this place. That's why I'm saying we should hurry up. We feel the rain of your love. We see the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven. Let us hear. See the rain of your love. Feel the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven. Let us hear. So let it rain. Let it rain. Would you open? God gates of heaven. pass the prayer request very quickly once we start we're just going to move um, let me encourage those who came with sick people or those who came for healing please make sure you get ready so that when it's time we'll just do that very very quickly hallelujah very quickly and then um, we'll be able to minister to people no matter what your condition is one of the things that we're going to be releasing today listen we had an encounter um we just returned from ekiti state it's a lovely place and um, listen something really happened as they picked us from the airport in elorin to ekiti we passed a small village please listen a small village the border between kwara state and ekiti state and i saw one of the most miraculous things in my life I saw the obituaries of people listen 132 years 120 years it's like nobody died except they were 100 and something and in my mind I was saying Guinness Book of Record has been lying to us for long and the, the interesting part of it listen is that the people they are not on glasses their dentitions are still exact they don't use crutches they are working firm one of them was a senior apostle that died last year 132 serving in the ministry alive and doing well when i saw those obituaries i said there must be a grace for longevity there, there is a covenant in this lineage that brings longevity and i told the guys i said when we're coming back we're stopping here you can trust me oh the law of honor as soon as we got there we stopped and we came out we went to the women they could not understand english please quickly with a request and we told them we said we are pastors we went to minister in equity and we are going back to the north but we discerned that there is a special anointing a strange grace for longevity and we want them to release upon us and then a lot of things happened that i may not say here and then they took us to one old man and the man just sat on his chair when we went they interpreted and they told him we came to receive that unction for longevity the man looked at us he said we should all kneel down and we got down on our knees and this guy began to pray and prophesy he's on record i'm sure maybe one of these days we played he was in yoruba i didn't care what he was saying Ejimi. all i know is that he was speaking a language and my spirit was receiving it this guy kept prophesying releasing that grace and that mantle upon that territory upon us i said that's right i knew that there's no mistake about this the moment we finished with him honored him sowed the seed into his life 
appreciated all the people we were on our way going back to the car and i felt in my spirit to go back and thank the women i went back to thank them and i saw a particular woman and they said this man 132 years this is his wife ah when they said that i said interpret for them that we came for and the woman looked at me they can bear me witness she just tapped me and said you follow her we followed her into a room she just opened the door and i saw pictures from one side to the other she started showing me the pictures i thought it was the wife of the man when he was in his old age you know like ketura that was the one and only woman he married that means that woman should be at least maybe 120 years or something alive these guys can bear me witness no glasses no crutches no nothing i said what kind of grace is this brothers and sisters there are mysteries you've heard me say this thing and when we finished before we finished talking we all got down on our knees and we told the woman she first started singing a song I don't know what it was I don't care what it was this woman spent like 10 minutes just letting it out from her spirit and do you know I was I don't know if I was sharing with them I felt as if they put a crown on my head that's how as I was feeling I knew I got this thing immediately she got it I told her I said let's snap I held her hands and we got to the place we'll show you the video and we snapped and I said I'm standing face to face with a woman 100 and something alive dentition complete can speak no glasses ah it was you i was thinking about i was happy to transport that grace brothers and sisters we brought it it must land on you tonight <laughs> hallelujah i mean, i was just looking i was looking to empty everything i had i said what kind of grace is this we went to minister in a university called Afe Babalola University. The man himself is 86 years, alive and doing well. In those regions, if you are 80 years, you are still a child. Believe me. Then when we were returning, I saw the shock of my life. 141 years. One, how many? 41. I saw the obituary. He just died. 141. And I got it. Let's see the devil that will manufacture himself from anywhere to come and take my life. No. See, listen. If you don't believe in transference of grace, you will die young. Don't you ever think it was because of the food they are eating. I didn't see any hospital around there. I just saw a church. And people, if you can be 190 and not be able to talk, but you are 141. The guy 132 was still serving as a man of God. You are cooking by yourself and you died and left the wife. The, the mama tapped me. In this place, once you are 60 years, you hold crutches. What cause is that? I always believed it, but now that I've seen it, ah, there's that song that says, my eyes have seen. Don't play it. My eyes have seen it. There are many strange things that will fall today. Listen, if you care, you can receive. If you don't, when we were coming, we were in the plane, and the plane was bouncing like a football. I just remember that old woman. I said, plane, you are joking. I'm surrounded by too many mysteries. Please believe me. Hallelujah. 86 years, still a lecturer. 89 years still a lecturer alive 100 and something years you see the women as if they are 50 something but some of them are in their 90s 80s hundreds that's grace brothers it's not about anybody praying for longevity there is an anointing that comes upon territories and tonight in the course of the meeting is when it's time to pray that please receive it we need to be alive to do a lot for the kingdom pray and say lord my spirit is open to receive everything you have for me
Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Why do we do this all the time? We do this because there are spirits, listen, that stand in the way of people's destinies. Don't think that deliverance is just something we do mechanically. I'm about to pray because there are people who came here. There are those who represent families, altars that have tied the destinies of men down. I'm going to pray. I tell you, I sense a heavy anointing. Please, the moment that happens, I like you not, don't just fall and stand up. Begin to pray and receive and reject everything that is not of God. Father, your word says upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. It says there shall be holiness. And it said the sons of Jacob shall receive their possessions. Therefore I pray, every spirit, every altar, every manipulation of darkness that is responsible for the tragedy in any man's life inside the first overflow second and third as you shout jesus like fire let it begin to land on people right now one two three i command those spirits right now right now my goodness my goodness inside outside like fire is coming upon people is coming upon people is coming upon people hallelujah the lord is giving me a very foolish instruction just lift your right hand that's what i hear right hand my goodness you don't need to shout just lift your right hand leave the drums just lift your right hand this don't mind me let me do my stupid thing the lord is giving me an instruction I see at least up to 33 people the lord is just saying i should stretch my hands the moment that happens i'm seeing like a stone being broken these are families altars in families lord according to your word right now at the count of three all the people and families involved i stretch my hands one two three let it happen right now right now right now right now right now just keep your right hand lifted. Sheba Babakata. Altars. 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 Right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Bring them out. Those strange altars. Strange altars. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. The Lord is saying He is visiting fertility issues fertility issues barrenness whatever it is lift your hands at the count of three as you shout jesus anyone connected to you or anyone here under a spell of infertility at the count of three be broken one two three break 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 right now right now right now infertility there are some ladies feeling fire fire around your stomach fire around your womb fire around your womb fire around your womb is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking hallelujah please lift your hands the lord is speaking to me there are people here everything you touch dies in your hand lift your hands please no matter what it is if it's a relationship it dies Jakatarata, mandereto shota at the count of three let fire fall every cause of bad luck at the count of three shout jesus one two three go 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 
right now those altars those altars right now everything your hand touches dies people come around to help you and they leave you it's changing right now it's changing right now it's changing right now hallelujah sisters lift your hands any stranger that visits you in dreams lift your hands speaking to you planting things the lord is giving this instruction every spirit husband just for ladies i tell you many people will be free right now at the count of three it's like fire that will fall on you lord let it fall every entity coming to oppress these people planting barrenness bad luck one two three take it take it take it take it let them go now inside and outside let them go now let them go now let them go now let them go now my dear tap that lady for me yes that lady nodding an angel is touching you he's bringing a miracle for you right now that's what i see i see like cold sensation coming to your head a miracle and as it's happening to her may it happen to you right now in the name of the lord jesus christ lift your hands and begin to pray over your request let it rain please pray go ahead and just prophesy and say lord this marks the end of it the bible says believe in the lord your god pray pray don't look at me pray open your mouth and pray Shabba baba in the name of the lord jesus christ in the name of the lord jesus christ father we turn go ahead and pray lord my request is turned into a testimony i must testify by the anointing of the holy spirit standing upon the eternal counsel of god the hand of the lord itself will bring this to pass the burden is lifted in the name of Jesus. Are not angels ministry spirits sent forth to minister to the heirs of salvation? Let the ministry of angels begin to bring to pass every single request in this place. In the name of Jesus, we command the foundations of the earth. We command the firmaments. We command the waters to begin to align themselves towards the fulfillment of this request we lift every body placed upon the shoulders of men by the anointing of god's spirit and we set these ones free in the name of jesus mighty and everlasting god standing upon your promise to us upon this altar the heavenly portals opened in this place we command a performance of the requests the desires placed here tonight in the name of jesus we decree the heavens answer speedily everyone trusting you for the fruit of the womb receive in the name of jesus promotion from on high receive in the name of jesus an end to demonic oppression it happens now in the name of jesus blind eyes open deaf ears open destinies moved forward 
in the name of Jesus satanic burdens removed in the name of Jesus we thank you Lord because speedily according to the seasons of life they receive a performance in the matchless name of Jesus we decree amen father hallelujah hallelujah please rise up on your feet and receive the prophecy you can I saw a spirit and, and I'm praying for the students now please listen when I was outside ministering I saw a spirit like bees released to produce massive failures in the exam that is being written in the name that is above all names I pray for everyone here the kind of performance you have never seen receive it in the name of Jesus the kind of performance I pray from the depth of my heart the kind of performance you have never seen receive it in the name of Jesus the grace for favor where you have labored and tried and it didn't work beginning from tonight step into a new dimension of favor step into a new dimension of favor every direction you have been praying and asking the Lord to give you between now and next Friday receive that direction receive that direction I want to pray for business people anyone in business lift your hands the strategy the strategy that you need to win in the name of Jesus receive it right now may it appear to you in dreams in the name of Jesus Christ everything that has died in your hands I command it to come back alive in the name of Jesus Christ now I want to pray for you father that old Baba prayed and released upon our lives the mantle of longevity 132 still alive I pray for you please receive it me too I received it from the depth of my heart Lord you know that I wanted this not for self but for the house at 70 you are still standing strong at 90 you are still moving strong until you get to 120 no devil takes your life in the name of Jesus hear me the force that immunes people from accidents comes upon your life right now The force that immunes people from terrorism and the wickedness, it comes upon your life right now. That spirit that kills people at the prime of their life, when they labor and about to enter, it takes their lives. It leaves your life forever 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 hallelujah may you see your children's children to the fifth generation believe what i'm saying i've seen human beings bodily carrying this revelation you step into it in the name of jesus therefore anyone here that death is eyeing that you will not see the next miracle service or you will not see the end of this year i don't know how the plan is going on in the realm of the spirit but i avert it right now i avert it right now the same way you will live long physically everything that is good in your life lives long with you your health lives long with you your wisdom lives long with you faithful lives long with you Two prayer points quickly where you have been rejected you step into a place i've experienced it all 
Let me tell you something. Hallelujah. I will never forget. You know, Jimmy knows the story. In 2007, I remember that time I went to collect a loan from a bank. Remember the story? I went to collect a loan from the bank. We had done everything. And then when it was now time for them to give me the loan, they embarrassed me. I was humiliated. The same people who were helping me, it was as if a charm came upon them. And I looked at that person. And I vowed that till I die, till I go to be with the Lord, I will not collect loan from anybody living or dead. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.